gentlemen, in keeping with the unity of our armed forces as they continue to fight the war against global terrorism, the United States Military Academy and the U.S. Naval Academy will present the colors with a joint color guard made up of both cadets and midshipmen. Please rise for the invocation by Captain Allen Blues Baker, Chaplain, United States Naval Academy, after which we ask you to remain standing for the singing of the National Anthem by the United States Naval Academy Combined Men's and Women's Glee Club under the direction of Mr. Monty Maxwell. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, upon this gridiron we shall soon see the same gallantry currently on display by service academy graduates who this very day fight for freedom and to give the gift of liberty to those unable to defend themselves. Look with favor on each player and all members of our two great institutions. Reward the efforts of both sides with a game marked by courage and honor that will grant each participant lifelong memories in a game exceptionally well played. We now offer a moment of silence to you out of respect to those brave Americans deployed into harm's way today. We honor those in our nation's military who have fallen, who are wounded, who are, who are currently fighting in this global war on terrorism. Receive this moment of silence that they might not be forgotten. Finally, Lord, bless our nation, our Commander-in-Chief, and those from each generation who answered the call to stand for liberty and justice. Amen. Welcome you back to our studios. You know, we've talked about it many times, Spencer. This is a game that you absolutely always wanted to see, and we got a chance to see it in person. Timmy, I had an opportunity to meet a veteran some time ago on a plane and gave him my first class seat, and he deserved every bit of it. It makes me so emotional to see this. This is a moving moment. Well, when we come back, Iron Eagle and Boomer Esiason will have the 105th Army Navy game. The Home Depot College Football on CBS is sponsored by Jeep, the United States Army, the Home Depot, and by Ballpark Franks. Who will make it to the Final Four? A new Survivor Thursday and the season finale CBS Sunday. People love having cable installed, right? Just like they love root canals and in-laws and traffic jams. Most people think cable and internet installations are a real hassle. At WOW Internet and Cable, we're doing something to change that. I have never experienced such professional service. Professional and courteous installation service. The tech was wonderful, very knowledgeable. So relax, call WOW. We'll take care of everything. Call 1-866-4WOW now for your hassle-free installation. And ask about our price guarantee until 2007. At the Safe Auto Call Center, the phones never stop ringing. To find out why, let's talk to some actual drivers. What do you want from a car insurance company? Coverage I can afford. Like minimum coverage from Safe Auto. Yeah. How about you? 
premiums I can live with. Like Safe Auto's guaranteed low monthly payment? Exactly. I think we figured out what makes our telephones ring. Affordable minimum coverage drivers want. Will you be our next caller? 1-800-SAFE-AUTO. We keep you legal for less. A courtroom can be a very uncomfortable place to find yourself. Judges, juries, and lawyers can be intimidating. At Smith Phillips, we have over 30 years of experience protecting the rights of injured people, and we're as comfortable here as you are in your living room. If you've been seriously injured in a car collision and an insurance company tries to intimidate you, you may find yourself here, and you'll need someone to protect you. At Smith Phillips, insurance companies don't intimidate us. If you've been seriously injured in a car collision, call Smith Phillips at 888-311-LAWS. Wall to Wall Sports, Saturday and Sunday at 1135. This HD broadcast is brought to you by Argent Mortgage. Ask your mortgage broker about Argent or log on to ArgentLoans.com. Before his orders to patrol the streets of Fallujah. Chad Jenkins, first lieutenant, rifle platoon leader, Operation Iraqi Freedom. Before his deployment to the waters of the Persian Gulf. Clint Bruce, Lieutenant, SEAL Team 5, Operation Enduring Freedom. They shared a bond, football's greatest rivalry. The halls of West Point. The yard of Annapolis. This was my training ground. Here the lessons of discipline, responsibility, and integrity prepared me for service to a nation. Here I learned to live the Army motto, duty, honor, country. As captain of the Navy team, the branding of leader was one of my highest honors. As quarterback of the Army football team, I became part of a special brotherhood. For four years, the unity of the uniform would be divided. That divide would last just 16 quarters. Today, the rivalry remains as intense as ever. But off the field, our competitors become our comrades. Those adversaries from Saturdays in December are now the ones I entrust with my life. With my life. United. Shoulder to shoulder. Brothers to the end. Serving the flag. Serving the flag. United States soldier. United States sailor. Go Navy. Go Army. Beat Army. Beat Navy. One of the most storied rivalries in all of sports. A series that dates all the way back to 1890. This is a matchup that personifies pride, sacrifice, and commitment. We come to you today from the city of Philadelphia, and for the ninth straight year, CBS Sports proudly presents Army Navy Football, America's Game, live from Lincoln Financial Field. And as we welcome you inside the broadcast booth, hi everybody, Ian Eagle along with Boomer Esiason. So honored to be with you once again for Army-Navy, the 105th meeting between these two schools. The impact that this game has is felt worldwide. We know that. For the players, the participants involved, simply put, this is the most important thing happening to them. This really is, Ian. This is their Super Bowl. These are men that are literally on a mission today. They don't want to leave this field a loser. They will fight their guts out for, thir for 60 minutes, and at the end, we're going to see sportsmanship that we don't normally see after a game as they come together as one, as they represent our country. I am so proud to be here with you and to be covering this game. Navy has dominated this series each of the last two years. Army will look to turn the tide. Army-Navy, our nation's rivalry, is next. Will someone please explain to me why nobody grills in the winter? I mean, think about it. Did the caveman stop cooking meat over the fire at the first sign of a snowflake? Look, pal, just because it gets a little nippy doesn't mean the world stops turning. Nope. I say when the going gets cold, the cold get grilling. So pull up your wool skirt and throw down some plump grill master dogs. And remember to look at the bright side. You don't need to buy ice for the beer. Ballpark Grill Master Franks. Be big, be meaty, be frank. What happened? I just can't recall the present that I got at Kay. 
This holiday, how will you give her as much joy as she has given you? <laughs> Mom likes it. <laughs> Diamond solitaire earrings from K Jewelers would be a great start. Wow, she really likes it. And you can be assured of two things. Every diamond is hand-selected to match beautifully, and she'll absolutely love them. I think they're gonna kiss now. I think you're right. <gasps> Every kiss begins with K. Bragging rights for these two academies on the line here in Philadelphia, Army, Navy. The pageantry begins. Navy comes onto the field. The midshipmen, eight and two, going to a bowl game for the second consecutive year. They've accepted an invitation to the Emerald Bowl in San Francisco, December 30th, SBC Park, where they will take on New Mexico. High-powered rushing attack, number three in the nation behind Rice and Texas, averaging 290 yards per game on the ground. And Army makes its way onto the field. The Black Knights, two and eight. They have played their final year in Conference USA after seven seasons returning to independent status and trying to return to the win column against Navy. Lopsided games each of the last two years here in Philadelphia a year ago in Giant Stadium two years ago. So much emotion for the seniors involved. The brigade of midshipmen, the Corps of Cadets, The Commander-in-Chief Trophy, Navy is looking to win it outright. And time for a special coin toss as we go down to the field the here President in Philadelphia. Of the United States, accompanied by Brigade Commander Travis Amari and Cadet First Captain Ryan Boca. Captains for the Naval Academy. Referee is Jack Children. Commander in Chief, the captains for West Point. Yes, sir. Men, briefly, Navy, you're the home team in the blue jerseys. Army, the visiting team in the white. I have a commemorative coin that came all the way from Fallujah, especially for this football game. I'll ask the president to toss this coin. First, I will ask. Army captain, a visiting captain, what will it be? Heads, he said, this is the head. The commemorative flag is the tail. The head, the tail, and you called heads, he said. Mr. President, if you would. He called the heads. It is a tail. It is a tail. <laughs> Mr. President, I'd like for you to have that. You have won the toss. Would you like to receive? Would you like to defer the second half? Navy won the toss. They defer to the second half. Army, you want the football. Which way would you like to kick? Kick this way, gentlemen, if you will, please. Navy won the toss and deferred. Army will receive on this end. Gentlemen, shake hands. Have a great day. President Bush on hand as he was back in 2001 following 9-11. Moments ago, the Commander-in-Chief addressed really both teams in the locker room. He began in the Navy locker room, and we'll just think about it from the seniors' perspective, including Josh Smith standing there, your leader addressing your team before the biggest game of your career. Uh, I, I wouldn't really know how to react, to tell you the truth, Ian, and 
as we see him here over talking to Army now, and you'll see Joel Glover right there to his right, and Joel told us that the finality of his season here today didn't hit him this week. It's hitting him right here. Oh. You can tell how emotional he is. He's a co-captain on this Army Black Knights team. Army and Navy, 105th all-time meeting, just about ready to kick it off as we head downstairs. Welcome in the third member of our broadcast team, Dwayne Ballard. Thank you, Ian. Coach Bobby Ross, you have coached in the national championship game of Super Bowl. Where does this game rank? Right at the very top. That's a big one. I'm excited about being here and looking forward to it. Great to be with these young men on both sides of the field. Thank you, Coach Ross. Ian? All right, Dwayne, Coach Ross, thank you very much. This is quite a switch from a year ago where they played in <laughs> wintry sure. conditions. This is beautiful weather, absolutely perfect football weather. 45 degrees, clear and cool expected the rest of the afternoon here in Philadelphia. Now the series note, Army Navy, Army leading the all-time series with a mark of 49, 48, and 7. First meeting back in 1890, Navy got the victory there. Last year, Navy a winner, 34 to 6. We just saw Bobby Ross Boomer. You have a very deep connection with the coach of Army, your coach at Maryland. He was for my final two seasons there, and I have to tell you, that uh, his motto is you will succeed while overachieving. He loves the underdog role. He always gets the most out of his football players. And you know, when he came here to Army, and this is the reason that they brought him here, because they usually are underdogs when they step on the football field. And he will get the most out of these guys. He loves coaching this type of human being, a, a player that is bright-eyed, that will do what he asks. And that's exactly what he's gotten from his team this year. They won two games after not winning a game last year, 0-13, an NCAA record. And I'll tell you what, people at Army are happy to have him. He has turned it around, and you can feel the excitement in the air when you're up at West Point. Jeff Blumenfeld getting ready to kick it off for Navy. Scott Wesley is the deep man for Army. Army 2-8. Navy 8-2. We're underway in America's Classic. Wesley will take it out of the end zone. Here's Wesley across the 15, gets banged at the 19-yard line and driven backwards. 22-yard return as Adam Horn made the play on special teams. Zach Dahman, now a junior, regained his starting spot at quarterback in the fourth game of the season. Biggest key for him so far this season, as opposed to the last couple of years, he's cut down mistakes. Something Bobby Ross accentuated to it. Well, it's all about getting back to the fundamentals, cutting down on the interception, which certainly Zach has done, but also getting back to running the football. Fundamental football is what Bobby Ross has brought back to the West Point Military Academy. Dahman, a native of Fort Worth, Texas, the junior. And the first play from scrimmage, just shy of the 20 on a first and 10. Army looking to throw, deep drop. Dahman will swing, incomplete. Nobody home as we take a look at our starting lineups presented by Jeep. And across that line, senior oriented with Glover, Wojcik, Troy, Beer is the junior, and Neiman the other senior. And the backs and receivers, what a one-two punch. Carlton Jones, Tyler Robinson in the backfield, Alexander, Trimble the wideouts, Jared Ulikowski is the junior tight end. And a penalty marker on the play, illegal man downfield on the first play from scrimmage. Downfield on the offense, that penalty is refused. Second down. Now, Kevin Ross, the offensive coordinator for Army, that's Bobby's son, tried to open the game here with an easy completion for Zach Dahman, a little screen pass to the right side. But Tyler Robinson actually fell down before he had a chance to throw the ball to him, and he tried to throw it away. No interceptions, sound football. And a second and ten for Army. On a draw play, it's Carlton Jones, and not much doing. Able to carry for two, two and a half, depending on the spot. Akinbemi makes the stop defensively. We take a look at the Navy defense, and up front, Chase. That's Bob and Tunde Akinbemi and Jeff Vanek, both are seniors. Linebacking core, McLaren and Jackson, the heart and soul, with Seeley and Mahoney on the outside. Mahoney, a very talented sophomore. And the secondary, Kelly, McGown, Josh Smith, highly decorated player here at Navy. Hunter Reddick also back there for the Naval Academy. On a third and eight, Dahman has the protection. Fires incomplete. Colton Jones took a hit. Bobby McLaren, the linebacker, sniffed it out. 
Well, third and long is not a situation that you want to find yourself in if you are Ar if you are Army. And that time, Zach Thomas just trying to hit Jones right out of the backfield and perfectly read by the defense at the Naval Academy. And when you talk about Lane Jackson, he's their emotional leader. He's the guy that paces the, the locker room floor before the game, and he's the one that brings up everybody's intensity on that Navy defense. Tom Dyron Fourth will punt it with Jason Tomlinson, the return man, averaging just under seven yards a return. Gets it off cleanly. It will take an Army roll untouched. And finally, down at the 42-yard line, and that's where Navy will have it to start off after the 37-yard punt from Dyron Ford. Aaron Polanco had some big shoes to fill for Craig Candido, who graduated, and Polanco, a quiet leader, number two rushing quarterback in the country behind Josh Cribbs from Kent State, averaging just over 81 yards rushing per game. He's done the job. And when you watch this game, you'll see him take some vicious hits. He's one of the toughest quarterbacks I've ever seen, just on film. On a first and 10 from the 42, here's the option. Patented play on the pitch. And a solid gainer for Divis on first down. He picks up 14 first play from scrimmage. Starting lineups presented by Chief. And up front for the midshipmen, Stahl, Phillips, Rossi, Roich, and Brown. Rossi is the sophomore. The rest are seniors. Kyle Echol got some pro scouts in attendance here for the big fullback. Joined by Divis, Roberts, Wesley, and Tomlinson, legitimate pro prospect, Echo All-American candidate. On first down, inside Army territory, and there is the bruising style of Kyle Echol. Six yards straight up the gut for the midshipmen. Defensively for Army, they come in ranked last nationally in total defense, allowing 498.6 yards per game. Sullivan, Meyer, Lotz, and Craig up front. Washington, the leading tackler in the nation with Maimone and Campbell, the linebackers, and the secondary. Brewer, Daniels, Tarver, and Lewis. Experience group. Second and four. On the pitch, Roberts. Nowhere to go, Greg Washington. He has got a nose for the football. It's a loss of four. I'll tell you, defending this option is not easy. Although they only run about six plays, Ian, it's all the variables that come off of those six plays. And watch Aaron Polanco. He comes in, he's going to stick the ball into the fullback's belly, and then he's going to pitch it. And that's exactly what Army has to do. It's open field tackling. We talked to uh, Mumford, the defense coordinator of Army. He told us that Washington is a very good open field tackle. He's going to be very busy today. Greg Washington, double figures and tackles in all ten games on third down. Spun down. Will Sullivan, a fiery leader on this Army defense with a sack. Well, was there a guy more confident than Will Sullivan this week? Watch the top of the, your screen. Here's the pass rush inside and outside. Sullivan coming off the outside and wraps up Polanco. Now, Navy doesn't have a great passing game, and that's exactly the type of situation you want to get him in. Recruited by all three service academies, West Point just felt right to Sullivan. It's a loss of 12. And the punt, D.J. Blackledge returning, Eric Shuey the punter, and Blackledge backpedals, takes a roll inside the 10, and touched up at the six-yard line. Navy, good coverage. Marco Nelson able to get down the field, the speedy junior. Will step aside after the 49-yard punt. No score, Army, Navy. Come back to Lincoln Financial Field in a moment. Army Navy on CBS. The all new Jeep Grand Cherokee. With Quadra Drive 2, our most advanced four wheel drive system ever, a 5.7 liter Hemi V8, and our new electronic stability program. The off road legend continues on road. The strength of body armor lies in its ceramic plating. The strength of an Apache helicopter lies in its composite ballistic armor. The strength of an Abrams tank lies in its steel encased armor.
but the strength of a nation lies in a simple piece of aluminum. Storm through Africa. Let's go, let's go. Are the wrestlers so strong yeah! that the others might quit? I can't see. Don't miss the new Amazing Race Tuesday. Scoreless early, Army, Navy. We know that the ratings are going to be very high today. And Camp Aaron, John, in Kuwait. Live pictures, a nine hour time difference as they root on their respective academies. 12 02 mark here in the first quarter. A lot of passion felt globally on the pitch. Carlton Jones can't handle it. Trying to get out of the end zone. Did he? David Mahoney made the stop. Looked like he was able to just squeeze through. Yeah, I think Carlton Jones is looking up before he's looking for the ball. He's trying to find a place to run. And the pitch was okay. He's just got to put it away and try to get inside there. But he does a smart thing. Gets the ball and gets out of the end zone. Army's offense a little nervous, obviously. Their defense has got to feel pretty good about themselves shutting down that high-powered Navy offense that first series, however. They were that close to a 2-0 Navy lead as Jones got to the one-yard line. A second and 15 now for the Black Knights. They will run it. Carlton Jones trying to cut to the outside, stays on his feet. And that second effort got him a gain of three. Vaughn Kelly came up in run support from the cornerback position. The native of... He's going to play or not. He has a, a, a mild groin strain that he hurt a few weeks back. I guess, I guess, I think it was against UAB. Mm -hmm. but, you know, he was emphatic about, I am healthy, I am ready to go. And when you talk to these young men about this game, they are not going to miss it. They, they want to be here in the worst way. Jones lost his shoe, so he's forced to the sideline. Seth Goldsby steps in, the junior. Can't throw an interception here if you're Zach Thomas. No mistakes in your own zone. Three wide receivers set on a third and 12, and the play whistle dead. Our referee today, Jack Childress, the ACC crew, and a timeout has been taken by Navy at the 10:32 mark, first quarter. Army faces a third and long when we return to Philly. This holiday season, give that special someone on your list something they can't wait to use. Grab all your gifts and a tree to put them under. You can at the Home Depot. Hurry in. The exclusive Dremel 220-piece kit is now $29.99. A Ryobi 12-volt drill kit with stud sensor and 26-bit set is $59.97. Nobody has more know-how to help make your holiday dollars work harder. The Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. As a proud Earthlink employee, I swear I'll do my part to help protect you from the bad internet. I promise to hate pop-up ads as much as you do. And I promise we won't rest until your inbox is free of spam emails like hot girls want you and why be bald. We're going to help you. We're going to take your problem and treat it like it's our problem and we're going to work it until it's solved. I promise. I promise. More access options, free blocking tools. That's better internet. Earthlink revolves around you. With faster acceleration than a BMW 325XI and an Audi TT, the all-new Hemi-powered Jeep Grand Cherokee conquers the road like a sports car. And with our exclusive Quadra-Drive 2 four-wheel drive system, it conquers everything else like a trail-rated Jeep 4x4. Why would Bob Dylan break his long silence and do an interview on 60 Minutes? Isn't that something? There's only one way to find out. Watch it on Sunday. The Home Depot College Football on CBS is sponsored by Jeep, the official vehicle of the 105th Army-Navy game. Paul Johnson, he has galvanized this Navy program. He is 2-0 against Army 
And they're headed to their second consecutive bowl game, having a problem with his headset right yeah. now. That's well, the top priority. If they win this game, it'll be nine wins, and it'll be the first time that they've done that since 1963 when the great Roger Stahlbeck, the Heisman Trophy winner here at the Naval Academy, and uh, a terrific accomplishment by Paul Johnson has really set this program on a path of greatness. I mean, you, you can't underestimate what he's been able to do in the last three years. On a third and 12 for Army, Carlton Jones is back in there. They took care of his shoe deep in their own territory, the Black Knights. On third down, Dalman looking to throw, feeling pressure on the flip for Jones. Jones unable to shed tacklers, and he is brought down at the five-yard line. It's a gain of one. Josh Smith leading that charge for Navy. And that's impressive ball hawking there by the Navy defense. Take a look at Zach Dahman in the pocket. Hey, just standing right in there, showing good poise, and then does the right thing, drops the ball off. But watch the Navy defenders just come flying to the football. That's what you love to see when you're the defensive coordinator. Jason Tomlinson, second opportunity today to return a punt from Tom Dyronport. Standing just about at the end line. And Dyron fourth, high punt. Allowing his team to get down the field. Contact made and a flag down. Fair catch was called for by Tomlinson. And Brent McCorkle, the snapper, getting into the face of the return man. Now the call made against Army with that contact from McCorkle, a little bit overzealous. You know, I, it's kind of questionable. I understand why you call it, but the fair catch signal went up a little bit late right there, and it's almost impossible to stop. You know, there's one thing that Bobby Ross is not going to tolerate. He hates penalties. He hates mistakes like this, and look at that. Pretty tough. That's a pretty tough penalty to call right there. Set the football at the 24. Look at that eyesore. That litter might as well be a shove to the... Pass! And the this pass. could be the game! Transform the force! But Navy has their own secret weapon. Army's heading for the end zone. Navy blocks the play. And the sub force comes through again. Every year we get a chance to see some of the spirit <laughs> spots from both Army and Navy. That obviously coming from the naval side of things on a home computer. Hey, just listen, some, threw that up. Some make it, some don't. <laughs> we see all of them. Okay, some are worse than that. <laughs> on a first and ten, look at the field position. The 24-yard line to start this drive for the Naval Academy. 9.41 to go in the first. Here's Polanco on the gift. First man through, Kyle Eckel. And he picks up a yard. Let's talk about the possibilities of Echol continuing his football career as a flag is thrown. It's a Philadelphia native, just about four blocks from here. He grew up from Lincoln Financial Field. And Jack Childress once again. Offsides. Against Army. Tell me about Echo. What's the breakdown? Well, I talked to a San Francisco 49er scout just before who's here at this game and also a New York Jet executive that is here scouting this game. Both of them feel like he's a draftable player, probably middle to late rounds. The question will be, you know, does he want to do that? And you want to know something? He does want to play professional football. He, that's exactly what he told us. On a first and five for Navy. On the give, it's Echo again. And just about everybody involved for Army defensively as he picks up two yards up the middle. He was the MVP in last year's Army-Navy game with 152 yards and two touchdowns. And take a look at some of the names on that list for Echo among career leaders in touchdowns at Navy. That's some pretty good names there, don't you think? And uh, at 5'11", 240 pounds, he told us that he ran a 4'5", 540. That's the case. He's definitely draftable, and he's definitely in NFL material. Now a second and three. More of Echo carrying a tackler on his shoulders. Matt Maimone was unable to bring him down as Echo busts through the middle. And a first down 
for Navy. When we were talking to John Mumford, the defense coordinator for Army, we said, okay, what are the keys to stopping this defense? It's the fullback. You have to stop him first. Look at the blocking. Look at the cut blocks. Guys are on the ground, and you know, Bobby Ross told us they love to cut. They love to get guys on the ground, and Echo is not going to be denied. On a first and goal inside the 10, it's Echo again. Kyle Echo inside the five. Tommy Ryan grabbed him by his ankles. A three-yard gain for the senior from Haverford. Kyle was telling us how uh, he's going to have uh, between 30 and 50 tickets for today. He actually said it's really limitless. I just can't afford all of these tickets. Uh, he's a hometown hero here and obviously wanting to make a statement in this game, his final Army-Navy game here in Philadelphia. On to second and goal now for Navy. Looking to take the lead under eight minutes to go on the first. Long count for Polanco. Trying to pitch it. Polanco, a spin move. He kept it himself. The wise decision. His army was all over that option. Seth Lotz, first man there. Now the interesting thing about Navy's offense, they don't have tight ends. They have slot backs. And Polanco's got a read right there. Probably should have handed it off to to Echol that time as Will Smith, Will Sullivan came up and made the initial hit, but it's not easy for Aaron Polanco. He's got to read those defensive ends. He's got to make split-second decisions. For the most part, he's right on. On a third and goal inside the five, the toss. Eric Roberts looking to go wide and spilled out along the sideline. Caleb Campbell down there, the whip, as they call it in this Army defense. He's the freshman from Perryton, Texas. This is a win for the Army, given the, the fact of where this field position started for Navy. To get down here, to hold them here, and to push everybody to the sideline again. You could see, and this is what Bobby Ross was telling us, last year when he got here, he looked at two films, Navy and Air Force versus Army, because he knew you know, that would be the highest emotional state that his team would have been in, so he'd get a real good feeling for them. And you can see right here in this game, that's exactly the emotional state that they're playing with right now. Big play early, fourth down. They're going for it on a fourth and goal. Play clock had hit zero. Polanco was trying to draw Army into a mistake. But to go back to that point again, uh, Bobby Ross was saying when he took this job over, he wanted to see how his players looked at their highest state of emotion and passion. And obviously, Air Force and Navy were going to bring the most out of this particular football team. And what he saw were guys on the ground, guys having trouble getting off the ground. So they instituted an agility program in the winter. And what you saw there on that last third down play were guys running to the football, not getting up off the ground, staying away from the blocks. After the five-yard penalty, off the delay, a 24-yard field goal attempt for Jeff Blumenfeld. Trying to put Navy in front. Blumenfeld's kick. No good. He missed it from 24 yards away. Now just three of 10 on the season. In field goal attempts. And Navy comes up empty. Army's defense did its job not allowing the touchdown. And then the bad snap led to the missed field goal. Seven years ago, Bristol Myers Squibb Medicines literally saved my life. I simply wouldn't be here without them. Today, Bristol Myers Squibb researchers are focused on our most serious diseases with revolutionary treatments for cancer and AIDS. These researchers dedicate their lives to fighting our most serious diseases. And these medicines can make the difference for millions of us. I'm living proof of that. Hope, triumph, and the miracle of medicine. Bristol Myers Squibb Company. When you can create your own holiday seafood feast, a meal turns into a celebration. Only Red Lobster lets you create your own favorite holiday feast by combining two or three of your seafood favorites. Choose from 11 signature dishes, including our very best sweet and tender snow crab. And remember, this holiday season, you can treat the seafood lovers on your list to a Red Lobster gift card. For the seafood lover in you. I'd like to experience a total system meltdown. I'd like to lose all of my music files. I would really love to get a virus and give it to all my friends. Millions of Americans are just asking for a computer virus because they're not nearly as protected as they think they are. I'd like it if someone stole my identity. 
That's why America Online now gives away virus protection to all our members. Absolutely free. That'd be great. Thank you. Want a better internet? You belong at America Online. Monday on The Late Show, Dave welcomes Renee Zellweger. And later this week, don't miss Tom Hanks, John Travolta, Salma Hayek, and Jerry Seinfeld. All Dave, all this week. Football just the backdrop for a much deeper meaning here. You're not kidding. Army and Navy, 556 to go in the first quarter. President Bush on hand here in Philadelphia. Just adding to the spectacle that is Army Navy, 556 to go in the first. Now in the first Bush. half, he's going to sit on the Army side, and in the second half, he'll clearly come over to the Navy side. The commander in chief, you know. He can't have his favorites. Got to balance it out. A first and ten from the 20-yard line for Army. Handoff. Carlton Jones looking for a lane. And he picks up six yards on first down. Good block by Adam Wojcik on that left side. Get complete coverage from all of today's games and read Dennis Dodd's take on the hottest topics in college football. It's all at CBSSportsLine.com. That was a heck of a block by Tyler Robinson also at fullback. And it's a nice little tandem Army's got in the backfield. Mr. Inside Robinson, Mr. Outside Jones, and a second and four for the Black Knights. Keep it on the ground. This time, first man through, Tyler Robinson. You can see the strength of Robinson, 5'11", 220 pounds, the sophomore from Greenwich, Connecticut. It's a five-yard game. We were asking Carlton Jones, which was more impressive, your five touchdowns or Robinson's five touchdowns, and which made you happier? And, of course, Carlton Jones said, this guy right here, his five touchdowns made me happier. And that's what you get from every cadet, every midshipman. They'll tell you that they are so happy for their teammates. And that's what the brotherhood's all about. Robinson had five touchdowns against Cincinnati. A victory there. First of the season snap in a 19-game losing streak on first and 10. Handoff to Jones. And he finds an open lane for a gain of five. What you're starting to see is Bobby Ross and his son, Kevin Ross, the offense coordinator, doing what they said they would do when they got to Army, and that is be more fundamentally sound, running the football, staying with the run, keeping the game close this way, and play action passing. Sooner or later, that's going to come, and you're going to see Zach Dahman out on the outside trying to hit a flat pattern or somebody down the sideline. A lot more balance on the offensive side of the ball this season for Army. They were half happy last year. Led to an 0-13 season. Second and five. Three receivers set for Dahman from the 36. The movement. Flag down. Carlton Jones. Able to take the opening and cross the 40-yard line. Lane Jackson in on that stop. It's another five-yard game. This will be on Navy. And uh, it'll be interesting to see. I don't know if Jones got the first down. If he didn't, Navy will be penalized. And I would assume that Army would take the penalty and keep the down. So it should be second and short here. Because I don't think a penalty will get them a first down. But, you know, talking to Bobby Ross and, and listening to him. Offside, number 93 of the defense. That penalty is refused. The yardage results in a first down. All right, it is a first down. So there you go. But, uh, you know, I saw a fire in his eye. That I saw some... Oh, I guess 20 years ago. Uh, you, didn't, say, you didn't want to do ago. that math. I, I didn't want to do the math, but the, the feeling is that he can make you overachieve. And that's what all of these guys on this field are. They're all overachievers. That's why they go to the academy. Ross does have a military background, graduated from BMI, served two years in the Army, and then coached the Citadel. On a first and ten, his drive continues. A little trickery on the end around. Corey Anderson. Busting to the outside, and Anderson has it in Navy territory. Pushed out of bounds just shy of the 40-yard line. Well, we just talked about Navy and their defense flow into the football, and I'm sure that Kevin Ross has seen that from his spot up in the coach's box, and he said, okay, they're overflowing. Let's see if we can come back with a reverse. The good call, perfect timing, nice blocking. Zach Dahman actually ran past the player right there that he could have hit, but watch the Navy defense flow over the top and get caught inside. Dahman does make a nice block at the end there, though, however. Anderson, a freshman from Tampa, Florida, came out of the Army prep school, USMA. Interesting storyline that we'll talk about today. On first and ten, Dahman throwing out of the pocket and deflected. 
looked like he had Aaron Alexander open, just could not find him. It'll be second and ten for Army. He really did, and Bobby McLaren, the inside linebacker, did a nice job of reading the eyes of Zach Dahman. He jumped up and deflected the football. That would have been a huge play. You know, it's interesting talking to these linebackers on both sides of the I mean, they are perfect. Mm -hmm. I mean, each one of the linebackers from both squads are the quintessential linebacking-type personnel. They're, they're from Central Pat Pasco. No? <laughs> On a second and ten. Line of scrimmage just shy of a 40-yard line. Play clock winding down. Dahman hands it off. Carlton Jones trying to get to the edge. Turns it upfield and accelerates out across the 35. Jones making a move. Reggie Seeley slid down to take him down the senior it's a gain of six on the ground for army interesting last year when we were doing this game Ian Bobby Ross and his wife Alice were sitting down in their home in Richmond Virginia watching this game and Alice is uh, Bobby's wife says you know it's your patriotic duty to go coach that football team yeah there were rumblings at that point right. that they were interested in Ross yeah. <laughs> and Ross decided you know what this would be a great place to coach and, and army is certainly happy to have it third and four little pitch on the toss right up the middle to Carlton Jones and maybe was not fooled Seeley combining with Jeremy Chase the junior from Norfolk Virginia and Jeremy Chase was not fooled as he comes off the end here watch this he's looking in the backfield he sees the play redirects and makes the tackle and Jeremy Chase is doing this coming off of a left dislocation of his shoulder and you can see the, the wrap right there underneath the left arm pad holding it all in place. You think this game needs to be for these guys? Sure does. Fourth and three. They could have attempted a 51-yard field goal. That's not realistic for Army, so they'll go for it. On fourth down. Handoff. Can Jones get the first down? No. Stonewall at the 33-yard line by Josh Smith along with Jeremy McGowan. You know, if there's one area which these academies really struggle in, it's the kicking game, the field goals. And this is what happens when you struggle with field goals. You have to go for fourth and in and, and, and plays that you probably wouldn't go for. And watch the defensive Navy just swarm to the football. I tell you, this is the first time I've seen them in person, and they are impressive, the way that they arrive at the football and gang tackle. So Davy takes over on downs from the 30-yard line. Inside handoff, Kyle Eckel. And again, not much room to work with. This Army defense much improved from the one we saw a year ago where Eckel just sliced through the defense, mostly up the middle where they just couldn't bring him down. Remember John Mumford, their defense coordinator, was the interim head coach here last year after Todd Berry was uh, fired, and we asked him about stopping this run with your 115th run defense. He said, we're much better this year than we were last year, I guarantee you. Second and nine, the pitch, big play! Eric Roberts busting to the clear. Here's Roberts across the 30, looking for an angle. Walk down to the 22 by Jonathan Lewis. Eric Roberts has not been as big a factor this year in the Navy offense, but the slot back is very explosive. I guess I might have spoken a little too quickly, but uh, this is what this triple option does to you. You are so focused on Kyle Echo and Aaron Blanco. He comes around the corner, makes a nice pitch to Roberts. Roberts cuts all the way back. You know, and to see guys with this type of speed is something that you don't normally see at these academies, and that's where these players now are starting to get to because of these two head coaches. 44-yard rip with one minute to go in the first. On a first down, Echo inside run. And Echo able to pick up four yards on the play. Think about the versatility when you have Echo with his big physical style inside. Roberts who is the first man in Navy history to top the 1,000-yard mark in career rushing and receiving with the perimeter. And if you're Army, what you have to watch out for here right now is a play-action pass in the red zone after a long run. On a second and six. Keep it on the ground. Echo with a flag down. Tommy Ryan, the junior from Seminole, Florida, in on the stop for Army. Penalty marker on the play. Another mistake for the Black Knights. Well, I'm sure Bobby Ross doesn't make those mistakes, but 
you know, go back to the Navy offense here. You know, Paul Johnson's the guy calling the plays. He's down on the sideline. He knows what's going on. He can get, sense the feel of the game. And, you know, usually after a big run or a big turnover, he's going to come out and he's going to give you that same look, that same triple option look, and then Aaron Polanco is going to stick it in the belly, drop All back, sides, and throw it over the top. Number of 98 of the defense. That's a five-yard penalty. It will be second down. Well, Will Sullivan... <laughs> We had a chance to speak with Sullivan earlier this week. So much emotion and fire, you could tell it was just beaming out of him. He won the Black Knight Award, which means that he has put the team first. He is a selfless player, as the coaching staff decided. Eight seconds left in the first. Take the handoff to Echo. Polanco nearly lost his footing and able to fight his way for a first down. Matt Maimon in on the stop for Army. And time has run out here in the first quarter. Army and Navy, no score at Lincoln Financial Field. We'll return to Philadelphia after this message and a word from your local station. Katie was sure of her cholesterol plan. She took medication, she ate right and ran. Yet it wasn't enough to get bad cholesterol low. What's this? I'm still here in the land of no. Switch to Crestor, her doctor said. You're not to blame. All cholesterol drugs simply aren't the same. When Crestor performed in a head-to-head -head test, its lowering effect was clearly the best. Crestor's proven effective, that's well understood. Would you like to try it? Why, yes. Yes, I would. Ask your doctor about Crestor. Crestor is not for everyone, including people with liver disease and women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant. Simple blood tests are needed to check for liver problems. Tell your doctor about other medications you are taking, or if you experience muscle pain or weakness, as it may be a sign of serious side effects. Since Katie switched to Crestor, her cholesterol is much less. With Crestor and diet, it's the land of success. Get your free trial today, and you just might declare, I'm a Crestor success. Now you're getting somewhere. Would you believe 11 eyewitnesses or eight tiny drops of blood tonight? An all-new Oprah. It's the first time in 10 years he's done an interview like this. Hollywood's titanic megastar, Leonardo DiCaprio, one of the most important women in Leo's life. Was he always getting into trouble? And his brush with death? What happened? We started plumbing the earth. I didn't want to die. Leonardo DiCaprio. I was just wondering if you're looking forward to getting married. And the gorgeous Kate Beckinsale. Next Oprah. Monday at 4 on 10 TV. Before you sit down to dinner, take a moment to think about the thousands of Central Ohio families who won't be having a meal tonight. Then please take just one moment more to reach into your heart with a donation to the 10 TV Family Fund. For years, the 10 TV Family Fund has been helping to feed hungry Central Ohio families. And this year, the need is even greater. So please, show you care. Take a moment and make a difference. Show you care. Brought to you by Huntington Banks and 10 TV. athletics in its purest form as we welcome you back to Army Navy start of the second quarter here in Philadelphia Ian Eagle, Gruber Sison, Dwayne Ballin, our entire CBS crew Navy knocking on the door for the first and ten just outside the ten so they still can get a first down Army's defense was able to hold once can they do it again first play of this second quarter Eric Roberts lines up in the slot. And the run by Polanco. Driven backwards. Not fooling anyone. They'll give him a gain of one on forward progress. 
Remember last year when we did this game, Army came in here with a 50 defense, meaning a nose tackle in there and two defensive ends. Now they go to a 4-3. They got four defensive, two defensive tackles right in the middle of the field. And you can see right there, one of those guys, number 92, Tommy Ryan, making the play at the point of attack. And a second and nine, able to move the ball just a bit on second down. Three's option. Polanco will take it himself for the Navy touchdown. Well, what a terrific play by Aaron Polanco. They start one way. It's a freeze option, but it's also a counter option. You think they're going to go to the defense's left. They start one way, come back the other. And Polanco, this is the ability that he brings to this position for this type of offense. And that's the feel, to find the hole and to make the run for the touchdown. A terrific play by Aaron Polanco. His career ambition is to be a pilot, preferably in the Marine Corps. And he just soared into the end zone for Navy. Extra point, Jeff Blumenfeld. Well, those are no guarantees, as we know in this game. Polanco puts Navy on the board. The midshipman strike first. new Jeep Grand Cherokee with an interior that's quieter than a Jaguar S-Type 3.0. It's worth a look. The off-road legend continues on road. It was a cold and blustery day when he took the field. But like a true grill iron master, he knew whatever old man winter threw his way, nothing not snow, not sleet, nothing would stand between him and his big, plump ballpark Franks. Ballpark real master Franks. Be big, be meaty, be Frank. Here's your Bud Light. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, I think I'm just going to go freshen up a bit, okay? Okay. okay. <laughs> look, look at that. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, you like to dance as much as I like to dance. Hey, yeah. Well, nice. She's a little annoying, so but I'm desperate. Common. Oh, gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you mean Coop? Coop. She's annoying, but I'm desperate. She's annoying, but I'm desperate. What's that all about? <laughs> Fresh, smooth, real Bud Light. Nice try, pretty boy. It's all here. A cybersex serial killer. Why would somebody hide a camcorder in a vent? You're kidding, right? Now this agent will enter his domain. Oh, my God. New NCIS, CBS Tuesday. The Amazing Race is taking America by storm as teams journey across continents. They're tested to their very limits. Don't miss the critical challenges ahead and what happens along the way. A brand new Amazing Race, Tuesday at 9, 8 Central on CBS, America's most watched network. Scoring drive for Navy, 6 plays, 67 yards. Polanco taking it 10 yards for the touchdown. Drive took 2 minutes and 38 seconds, and Navy lifted to a 7 to nothing lead early stages, second quarter. There they are on the Army bench over there talking about defense. What just happened to us? They started one way and came back the other way, and it's a pretty good block, and then we'll show you right after the kick here, and you'll see just how difficult it is to defend this Navy triple option that goes many different ways and has so many variables coming off of it. They had 613 yards of total offense against Rutgers. Back in November, Lumenfeld on the kickoff. Scott Wesley is deep. Going to take it out of the end zone. Here's Wesley out across the 15 and then ridden down at the 16-yard line. Let's take a look at that last touchdown. Kyle Eckel, the fullback's going to come here. Blanco's going to turn this way. Roberts is going to go in, and then they're all going to come back. And watch the block by Roberts. Right here, you'll see three Army defenders all get hooked up in there. Polanco does a great job of reading the defense, finding the hole, and just making a play. And that's exactly what playmakers like Aaron Polanco, that's how they kill you. They just do it intuitively. 13th rushing touchdown of the season for Polanco, stepping in for the graduated Craig Candido, MVP of this game, two years ago. On first down for Army. Play action. Dalvin throwing to a spot, almost picked off. Josh Smith, who one year ago was watching this game in a hotel room here in Philadelphia, 
after having his appendix taken out. He made the play. Remember how disappointed he was. He was telling us it was just one of the tougher days of his life, but Dominic comes back, set your feet, and you got to throw it. Try not to stare the, the potential receiver down, and Smith reads the eyes of Dominic perfectly. That's the second time that Army's had a guy open behind the first level of defenders. And those underneath defenders are making nice plays to the football. Dominic so far, two of six, just two yards passing. Second and ten for Army, trailing seven to nothing. From the 16, Dahman on the handoff. Jones turning it upfield and out across the 20-yard line. That's a strong eight-yard gain for Carlton Jones, the native of Henderson, North Carolina. You can tell he's got good vision, very quick feet. He's led the Black Knights in rushing now the last three years. Coming into this game, 1,171 yards in 10 games. That's pretty impressive. Nice kid, coming off of a little bit of a groin injury. He said he was not going to miss this football game. And he sets up a third and two now for Army. I say kid, but these guys are men. Yeah. Let's face it. On third down. Play clock. Hit double zero. And this play never happens. They had gotten to a third and short situation. And another penalty marker. We have a dead ball foul for delay of game. Number seven on the offense. It's a five-yard penalty. It's still third down. They put that right on Zach Dom and the quarterback, and rightfully so. The quarterback's got to be aware of the clock at all times. First thing that you do when you get on a field that you haven't played on for a while is you find out where those 25-second clocks are, locate them, understand what's going on, and make sure you play to that clock. So instead of the third and two, now a third and seven running situation to a passing situation for Dom. Flushed out of the pocket. Dom throwing on the run. Bobbled and almost intercepted. Vaughn Kelly had it. The senior was oh so close to his second pick of the year. Well, if you're a quarterback, you don't want to do this. Roll right, throw against your body. Vaughn Kelly almost makes the interception. And that interception would have been caused because of the penalty on the previous play. They probably would have run it. Zach Dahman gets away with one there. Another punt. Jason Tomlinson is waiting. Tom Dyron for Junior from New Hampshire has a strong leg. Oh, wow, nice kick. Able to get rid of it quickly, and here's Tomlinson. Makes one move. Tomlinson to the 45. A stutter step to the perimeter. And Brett McCorkle, the snapper, comes down the field to make the play. But once again, excellent field position for Navy already with a 7 to nothing lead here in the second quarter. CBS Sports coverage of the 105th Army-Navy game will continue after this word from your local station. Who will make it to the Final Four? A new Survivor Thursday and the season finale CBS Sunday. Thank you, Central Ohio, for making 10TV Eyewitness News number one in November. The most watched morning newscast. The most watched at noon. The most watched on the weekends. And the most watched at 5, 6, and 11. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for making 10TV Eyewitness News Central Ohio's number one newscast in every key time period. Just one more reason we're Central Ohio's news leader. We bought a Chaps designer suit at a department store for $329.99 on sale. At K&G, they're less than half that. K&G has incredible savings on a wide range of fashions seven days a week. K&G Fashion Superstore. For men, for women, for less. Do you know how many people work at Honda? John attaches seals. Darius engineers audio. Jim loads bumpers. Teresa inspects doors. David installs drive shafts. Kathy fastens brake valves. Dick controls parts flow. Hazel handles tailgates. Walter builds engine frames. Kathy ensures quality. Julius paints. Kim oversees inventory. Dead air conditioning units. Marvin works in bell. Heart checks complete vehicle. Sheriff Titans lug nuts. 16,000 Ohioans work at Honda, making us, you guessed it, one of Ohio's largest employers. So when you say Honda, say Ohio. Kurt Ludlow and Ellie Merritt, weekends on 10TV Eyewitness News.
Bobby Ross, 24th year as a head coach. We asked him why he came out of retirement to become the head man of Army in our Home Depot coach's decision. I decided to coach Army uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, I felt, for, first of all, that I was a very good fit for it. I have a military background. Uh, secondly, it's very easy for me to come here because I really believe in this school. I believe in what it stands for. I believe in its mission. And uh, I, I thought I'd have been a perfect natural for it. And Boomer, he signed a five-year contract, so the long-term commitment is there. That and the fact that his wife, Alice, was sick and tired of watching him walk the dog without, <laughs> without purpose. But, you know, really, I, I have to tell you, he looks great. He is, uh, he is happy, and he is a perfect fit for it. You know, you don't have to worry about him springboarding this job to some other job. He's been at the top. He's been everywhere else. And he wants to make a difference at Army. Does face a big challenge, though, was able to get them into the win column this year. Army 2-8, and eight, first and 10 for Navy. Polanco throwing in stride. Frank Davis, the slot back. And sooner or later, it's going to come. And that time, they were lucky that Divis didn't take it for a touchdown as Polanco does a great job of faking in the backfield. All of these plays look the same to the defense. And the defense was telling us that it's all about the hats of the offensive line. If they stand up, it's a pass. If they don't, it's a run, but it's very hard to tell. First pass of the day, they go back to the bread and butter, the ground game. And not much room there for Kyle Echel. Greg Washington making the stop. Doug Meyer involved as well. First pass covers 19 yards. Polanco to Divis. People say it's a, a play action pass, but really what it is is a run action pass. It looks like a run and it sounds like a run, and then they throw it. There are no play action passes in this offense. Second and nine. Here's Echel leaving his feet and able to hurdle his way for a gain of four. Will Sullivan in there to make the stop for Army. And as odd as this may sound, there's a sound on the field that when there's a running play coming, the defense can react to it. They hear the, the collision between the offensive and defensive linemen. When there's a pass play, that collision doesn't take place, so the instincts of the defense tells it, well, oh, it's a pass play, because they don't hear that collision sound. But because of this offense and their propensity to run and always make it sound like a run, it's very difficult for those safeties to play like that. Now at 35 for the midship, Toronto throwing again. A little bit high for Lionel Wesley. They will go to fourth down, Delente Brewer. He's the senior from Dallas, Texas, had coverage on the outside. Fourth and five now for Navy. And here we are in that kind of that weird situation that these academy teams find themselves in, where, you know, if you punt it, it's not going to really help you, especially if you punt it into the end zone. And the kicking game's a little bit suspect, so it forces your offense to have to go for it. Army found itself in a situation in the first quarter. They were stopped. We'll see if Army can stop Navy, Navy right here. On a fourth and five. In no man's land, Polanco. Well, and complete. He's got Tomlinson who has thrown all the way back. We'll see where they spot the football. It's six yards. It's enough for a Navy first down. Oh, he got the first down. There's no question about that. Just too far off of Tomlinson. Polanco three step and throws it. You got to play a lot closer. If you are Jonathan Lewis, you got to play closer to Tomlinson. You can't give him that type of free release. That's too much of a gimme. Now Polanco doesn't throw it often, but efficient so far. Two and two on a first down. Here's Echo. Kyle Echo straight up the middle for the touchdown. Navy builds on its lead. Touchdown for Polanco, and now Echo gets in on it. Well, he said he was a 4 5 5 guy in the 40 yard dash. He certainly showed it right there. He takes it right up the middle. Oh, man. Kyle Echo, a huge Philadelphia Eagles fan. Able to get a touchdown on the very field that they play on as Blumenfeld on for the extra point. A six play, 53 yard drive. They convert it on fourth down, and the very next play, it's Kyle Eckel, virtually untouched for Pater. In a world where unfortunate events happen to people all the time. How very, very awful. How unfortunate it would be to not have that insurance. 
Lemony Snicket's a series of unfortunate events. In theaters December 17th. <laughs> Affleck, how unfortunate it would be not to have it. I'd like my hard drive to fry like a mozzarella stick. I'd like all our family photos to just disappear. I'd like catastrophic system failure. Millions of Americans are just asking for a computer virus because they're not nearly as protected as they think they are. You no, know, it'd be awesome if my computer could make the sound of a Yeti. That's why America Online now gives away virus protection to all our members. Absolutely free. That's what I want. Want a better internet? You belong at America Online. When you can create your own holiday seafood feast, a meal turns into a celebration. Only Red Lobster lets you create your own favorite holiday feast by combining two or three of your seafood favorites. Choose from 11 signature dishes, including our very best sweet and tender snow crab. And remember, this holiday season, you can treat the seafood lovers on your list to a Red Lobster gift card. For the NFL Today catches up with San Diego's quarterback, Drew Brees, and with New England's running back, Corey Dillon, the show that's always ahead of the game. The NFL Today, Sunday on CBS. Army's gonna flatten Navy. I don't think so. Navy's gonna take it all away. No way, Army. Navy. Army. Hey, Navy. You know we're gonna win today. Navy will carry the day. Okay. Army. Navy. Army. Navy. Go Army. Be Navy. Please remember to recycle your trash. <laughs> it's the method acting. You've got to respect the method acting. Army's looking for as much spirit as they can find right now after Navy just took a two-touchdown lead. Kyle Echo has 11th rushing touchdown of the season for the midshipmen. Very difficult to tackle this young man with one arm, and that's exactly the position that Greg Washington found himself in as the defense tries to figure out how to stop this high-powered Navy offense is finally starting to hit, hit, hit their uh, their stride, and now Army has got to respond. You know, momentum shifts in games. You know, it could be tidal wave-like, and right now Army is on the bottom of that tidal wave. They have to figure out a way to get in the end zone, heat up some clock, keep their defense on the sideline. Certainly, they have to put some points on the board. Only fell to kick it off. Scott Wesley did have a 97-yard kick return for a touchdown against Tulane. And Wesley is the deep end. This one comes up much shorter at the 20-yard line. And Wesley has nowhere to run. Let's go downstairs. Check in with Dwayne Bell. Hi, and the unit that Boomer just talked about that has a response is the Army Offensive Unit, coached by Kevin Ross, a 1988 graduate of the Naval Academy. Now, he ran track at Navy, and by his own admission, he told us that no one hated Army within the competitive context, hated Navy more than he did. But when his father said, come and work for me, he did. He's been called Benedict Ross by some of his former mates, and the guys at Army kid him and call him Skipper. All right, you know that he's getting real. <laughs> Week in and we got especially this week prior to the Army Navy game. Great connection between Kevin Ross and his dad Bobby. First and ten for Army. Running play, Carlton Jones through a hole and Jones able to get it out across the 45-yard line for the Black Knights. Jeremy McGown finally brings him down. And what a block by left tackle Joel Glover. Watch this block. That's what you call a pancake block right there, my friends. And Carlton Jones, well, they've seen this quite a bit up at West Point. And this is exactly the type of spirit that you need to see from Army. Their offensive unit has to step up at this point. 24-yard run. I know that is. You never want to be the goal, right? Isn't that what we're told in sports? Exactly. On a first down from the 48-yard line. Army on the move, trailing 14 to nothing. Dominant in the pocket, soft toss over the middle to the 45. Jeremy Trimble, the freshman from Ashburn, Virginia. His dad, former NFL defensive back, Stephen Trimble, the guy you're familiar with. Yeah, Steve and I played together at Maryland, at the University of Maryland, but Trimble will come right in and he will sit right over the ball. He will declare that this is his own. That's how he's reading it. He's gonna turn his shoulders to Dominant and Dominant's gonna deliver the ball on time. Trimble's got ability. Bobby Ross has high hopes for him over the next three seasons, getting experience as a flea on a second and three after the seven-yard pass play. Dominic 
draw play, Carlton Jones. And Jones pushed forward. He's got a first down for the Black Knights. Interesting talking about uh, Kevin Ross. When we met with him, he said he had a very odd situation that was starting to develop, and that was he didn't really know what to call his father when they were in meetings yeah. in front of everyone. Well, you know, what do you call him, Coach? Do you call him Bobby? Uh, what do you call him? Huh? Or well, he decided to do what he has done all his life, call him Daddy. And that's, and that's how he refers to, to Bobby Ross. And then Bobby Ross told us how proud he was. On a first and ten from the 42, Kevin Ross working upstairs behind the glass in the press box level. On a handoff, Tyler Robinson. Two tight end sets. So a big formation in a four-yard gain for Robinson. He's done a nice job. Versatile player. He can play tailback, but he has accepted his role as the fullback with his close friend Carlton Jones playing behind him in the backfield. You say that like fullbacks accept their role like the, like. He wants the glory, just like everybody else. But well, a fullback's glory is to open the hole for somebody else, believe me. Unless, of course, you're Kyle Echo. Exactly. I've got, I've got my example right there on the field for him. On a second and six. Thomas. And up Jones is back in there for Army. And spun down by Jeremy Chase. A three-yard game. Now, just talking about Zach Dahman for a moment. You and I met with him last year and had that young look to him to the point where you couldn't believe that he was a college quarterback. It looked like he looked like Opie Taylor. Yeah, he looked like a high school. He freshman. looked like Opie Taylor. So he looked like. All right, if you're going to get before more he got the high school, before he got the high school. What about this year? He doesn't look like Opie Taylor anymore, and a lot of that. The reason for that is because Bobby Ross has instituted a policy where these guys can actually take food back to their dorm with mm -hmm. them after practice. I mean, he has really grown in. To being a fine young man. Going from O.P. Taylor to Richie Cunningham. <laughs> yeah, we've seen the transformation in just one year. On a third and three. Robinson, did he get enough for the first down? He did. Twisting his way to the 30-yard line. Bobby McLaren, the inside linebacker, sliding over to make the stop. David Mahoney involved as well. And the interesting thing about Dahman is that he didn't start the season as the starting quarterback. He didn't take over until the fourth game. And Take a look at these numbers compared to last year. The big number really is this one right here. It's the interceptions. I mean, last year they were turning the ball over and giving opposing teams a short field to score upon. And this year, that's the big difference. You just don't make the big mistake. Critical possession here for Army trying to get back into it. Trailing 14 to nothing. Good drive. First and 10 from the 30. Play fake. Dahman knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Akin Bemi. The senior from Rialto, California, came to Navy as a linebacker and has been able to find his way to the nose guard position. You hear about games on the defensive line. Watch the nose tackle, Akam Bemi. He goes all the way to the left around the outside and reads perfectly Dahman's release. Goes up and makes a nice play. He has shown so much improvement during his four years at the Naval Academy. Economics major. Right young man had a chance to meet with him earlier this week. Second and ten for Army. Slipping down Robinson. Nobody was near him. It's a loss of two on the play. More on Akin Bemi. His grandfather was in the Army, and his dad thought this would be the best situation for him. Military. He didn't know much about it, admittedly, and you know, had some second thoughts when he got here, but it's fit in quite nicely. And he wasn't quite this big when he first got here. He was an outside linebacker, and then he became a defensive end, and now he's right down where he says the sloppy guys are. <laughs> he's one of them. He doesn't want to admit it. But he's one of those sloppy guys. He's right in the middle of the field, and he's there for a reason. That's to stop the run. Reggie Nettles, the former quarterback, checks in as a wide receiver for Army on a third and 12. Dahman in the pocket. Here comes the rush. Dahman throws low. Incomplete. Curtin Jones was in the vicinity, but Dahman was just looking to get rid of it with that heat up the middle. Well, that's the second time today that they've tried to throw a screen pass to Jones, and neither one has materialized. The offensive linemen are out there, but Jones is getting lost. Looks like the defense is either grabbing him or he's too far inside, and Dahman can't find him. Timeout. Army has taken its first at the 632 mark of the second quarter. Navy's got the 14 to nothing lead on Army.
Jason Bourne is back. Get Bourne! Packed with pulse-pounding extras. And why are they still after me? In the explosive thriller that will blow your mind. He's still out there. Get him. The Bourne Supremacy. Own the DVD Tuesday. Hi, I'm Dylan Hart Jr. Welcome to a new generation of Wrangler. New fits. New fabrics. New styles. Wrangler Jeans Company. A new generation of Wrangler. Do you believe in Santa Claus? Absolutely. He helped me pick this up. This holiday, show her you believe in her. With the Leo Diamond, handcrafted by the artisans at Leo Schachter. The first diamond to be independently measured and certified for its superior fire, sparkle, and brilliance. And like all diamonds at Kay, every Leo is hand-selected to match beautifully. Can I give you folks a lift? Every kiss begins with K. <laughs> The all-new Jeep Grand Cherokee. With Quadra Drive 2, our most advanced four-wheel drive system ever, a 5.7-liter Hemi V8, and our new electronic stability program. The off-road legend continues on-road. Tim Brando in New York. Coming up on the Earth Lake Halftime Report, Spencer and I will get you caught up on all of the action, including a BCS bid on the line with Miami and Virginia Tech. Brian Randall, the freshman Eddie Royal, to give them a six-point lead over the Hurricanes in the fourth. Now let's get you back to Army Navy. All right, Jimmy B, thanks very much. We'll keep you updated on all the scores throughout the day. Navy with a 14 to nothing lead here over Army. 6.32 to go until halftime, and now a fourth and 12 for the Black Knights. Not really what you want to have happen if you're Army, but I think what this kind of shows you, you know, I think if the game were close, Bobby would probably punt it, but he realizes, too, that this Navy offense is becoming more and more difficult to stop as this game has gone on. So he's got to do something here, and he's got to try to make a first down. And uh, this is not an easy spot for the, for the Black Knights to find themselves in, but I think Bobby recognizes clearly his defense has struggled the last few times on the field. The last Army coach to defeat Navy in his first year with the Black Knight, Tom Cahill, did it back in 1966. This is the 115th year of Army football, one winning season, just one over the last decade. Navy enjoying this incredible rebuilding process that Paul Johnson has put this program through. Eight and two. And off to the Emerald Bowl in San Francisco on December 30th. This is a fourth and 12 for Army. 6.32 to play in the second quarter. Jones in the backfield. Here's Dominic. Straight back. Rush coming. Dominic stays on his feet. Dominic. Intercepted. He floated it up there. And Josh Smith will go in untouched for the touchdown. Oh, and what a play by Josh Smith. And what a mistake by Zach Dominic. But it's fourth and 12. And Zach, Zach Dahman knows as we watch Josh Smith come off the field, Zach Dahman knows that he has to throw the football. What a moment for the senior from Attica, Indiana. Josh Smith was not even on the depth chart when Paul Johnson got this job three years ago. And Smith takes it the distance, 66 yards off the interception for the touchdown. Blumenfeld, the extra point. Oh, what a sequence. Dahman just trying to make a play for the Black Knights. And instead, he makes a big mistake. Josh Smith able to streak the other way for the 66-yard score. Navy builds its lead to 21 nothing. It was a cold and blustery day when he took the field. But like a true grill iron master, he knew whatever old man winter threw his way, nothing, not snow, not sleet, nothing would stand between him and his big, plump ballpark Franks. Ballpark grill master Franks. Be big, be meaty, be frank. 
B2K. Hear that Motown sound like Smokey Robinson found. Like Dr. Pepper, it's originality no world round. The taste of Dr. Pepper, the taste of originality, absolute individuality, and gives life a personality. Be you, you do what you do. Be you, nothing's better, Dr. Pepper. What's the story? No room. But this is our place. No room. There's a spike in traffic. Scalability issue. They should add seats. Or tables. Or hire more waiters. Build a bigger kitchen. It's an on-demand world. Why not just add capacity? Like with our servers? That's what we would do. Do you guys ever talk about anything but servers? No. no. Expand on demand. IBM eServer X-Series with Intel Xeon processors. A cybersex serial killer. Why would somebody hide a camcorder in a vent? You're kidding, right? Now this agent will enter his domain. Oh my God. New NCIS, CBS Tuesday. Josh Smith, the senior co-captain, gives Navy a 21 to nothing lead. How popular is this young man? He's from Attica, Indiana. They now have an affiliate on the Navy radio network <laughs> in Attica just because of Josh's exploits on the football field. Well, I don't know if they were listening to it, but I'll tell you what, watching it and seeing it, it was a pretty impressive play by Josh Smith. And as I was saying, Zach Domin had no choice other than to try to make a play. That's uh, the loneliest feeling that a quarterback can have right there, throwing an interception for a touchdown. And just a nightmare. Well, right now it's a 21 to nothing nightmare for Army. 6.18 to go here in the first half. Lumensfeld, the kick. Scott Wesley, a busy man today. As Wesley able to get through a hole out across the 25 yard line, they will have it at the 26. Jacob Biles on special teams able to make the stop for Navy. Smith wants to be a Navy pilot. Recognizes the fact that he's going to have to go down to Pensacola, Florida. Train down there. He'd still like to coach, though, here at the Naval Academy as a graduate assistant. I have a strange suspicion he's got some connections. <laughs> Might be able to get that game. Well, with players like that, you can understand that he sees the, the field pretty good and, and probably would make a good coach. Now, right now, Army is just looking for some points before the break. Handoff, Carlton Jones able to bring a Navy player or two with him as Troy and Beer provided good blocking up front. Six-yard game. Monday on The Late Show, Dave welcomes Renee Zellweger. And later this week, don't miss Tom Hanks, John Travolta, Selma Hyatt, and Jerry Seinfeld, an all-star group all day, all this week. Navy's got a lot to cheer about right now. They have dominated Army each of the last two years. Last season, convincing win, 34 to 6. Back in 02, 58 to 12. On second down, Jones. Quick tackle from Sealy, combining with Jeremy Chase. No gain on the play for Army. And with Army unable to, to throw the football, Navy is now really crowding the line of scrimmage. They realize that. Target number one for the Naval Academy is Carlton Jones. They do not want to let him get free on a long run, and they want to put the, the pressure right on Zach Common's shoulders, and until he proves that he can handle it, you know, that's the way the game's going to go for him. Jones, most rushing touchdowns in a season ever for Army. Got a big hit, 17 touchdowns on the ground. This is third down, Dominic, run. He was on his way down, and a flag comes down. Vaughn Kelly applying that pressure on Zach Dahman. And maybe some contact as Dahman got rid of the football. Jack Childress, ACC crew. Holding number 67 of the offense. That penalty is refused. Fourth down. That's Pete Beer, the junior. Janesville, Wisconsin. Academic All-American second year as a starter and called on the penalty which was turned down so army will punt it 
When you say Vaughn Kelly put the pressure on Zach Tom, and that means that Buddy Green is bringing a blitz from the cornerback situation. So Buddy Green, the defense coordinator, Navy, not resting for a moment. Tom Dyer in fourth. Will kick it away to Jason Tomlinson. Tom's brother David, a 2000 graduate of the U.S. Military Academy. And Tomlinson off the back pedal. Trying to weave his way through traffic at a cross of the 35-yard line. Just in time for the holidays, an original movie for the whole family. Joe Montaigne, Gene Smart, and Charles Durning star in A Very Merry Christmas. Sunday at 9, 8 Central, right here on CBS, America's Most Watched Network. Well, it's been senior day here for Navy. If you take a look at what Polanco has done, Kyle Eckel, and Josh Smith. All three with touchdowns, all three seniors. Handoff to Echol. Out across the 40-yard line. He picks up four yards. Tommy Ryan making the tackle. Four yards to Echol. Doesn't seem to be much of a problem. He gets four yards without much effort. And, and that's why he is possibly going to be an NFL football player when he gets an opportunity. And now the thing about here for Army, they have to create a turnover, Ian. They can't allow this Navy offense to go right down the field again. Tommy Ryan injured off to the sideline for Army on the option. Eric Roberts thrown down by Matt Mamone. He is the senior from Orinda, California. Been a hard worker. Very impressed. The coaching staff in the spring. And Bobby Ross able to find a spot for Mamone at the middle linebacker position. A loss of one. Important for Coach Ross to have great senior leadership. You know, everywhere he's gone, there's always been players that are that are left there from the previous regime, and he has to be able to count on those guys to lead by example. And Mamon has been a, a prime example of one of those types of players. Now a third and seven. On the roll, Polanco stops. Polanco looking for a hole. He's got one. Aaron Polanco crossing midfield as he was chased down by Seth Lotz. And that's all Polanco, 11 yards, and a new set of downs to work with. That's just being spontaneous, rolling to his left, seeing coverage down the field, can't find an open receiver. Well, what do you do? You run with the football, you make a first down. And one thing about Aaron Polanco that we have seen and we have seen throughout this season, he is a playmaker at the most important position on offense. Had a 179-yard rushing day against Wrights, and this is a first down. Back to throw it. Timing play. Up top. Great attempt by Roberts. Almost a one-handed stab. It's incomplete. Deion Tarver in on coverage. The seniors for Navy. Aaron Polanco got Navy on the board. Kyle Echo able to contribute. Straight up the middle for Navy. And then on the return, off the interception, Josh Smith streaking 66 yards for the midshipman. Second and ten for Navy. Straight back. Polanco airing it out. Over the middle. Great grab. Lionel Wesley. The senior from Duncanville, Texas. Over the head of Delente Brewer. And Polanco dropped it in the bucket. What is it? Three pass plays in a row that was called by Paul Johnson. Polanco throws it right down the middle of the field. And what a terrific catch by Wesley as he turns around his coverage man Delonte Brewer a perfectly thrown ball and it sets up a first and ten at the 12 and off Echol straight ahead for three and Greg Washington again in on the stop for Army 2.22 remaining in the first half maybe already with a big lead 21 to nothing and a chance to add to it Great grab by Wesley, English major. Been a hard worker for this midshipman program, and he showed off his good hands on that catch. Second and seven now. On the toss, it's Echo trying to cut to the outside. That's not an area that Echo normally drifts into, but Army was ready for it along the perimeter. Greg Washington scoped it out. On that long touchdown run that Echo had, he Kind of ran through an arm tackle by Greg Washington, who was fighting off one of the big offensive linemen for Navy. But that time, Washington, one of the best tacklers in the country, wraps up 
Kyle Eckel takes him right to the ground, and that's exactly what Bobby Ross was telling us. Open field tackles were going to be the key in this game, and Washington found one right there and made the play. Third and nine now for Navy. Down to a minute 20 to go, first half. Polanco looking to throw for it. Steps up. Polanco throwing on the run. Touchdown! Nick Yetkaitis. The junior from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. His first touchdown of the season. Navy, an extra point away from a 28 to nothing cushion. Very similar script that the midshipmen are following. Each of the last two years have been lopsided in Navy's favor. Blumenfeld tacks on the extra point. All 28 of the points coming in the second quarter. Polanco earlier did it with his legs. This time he does it with his arm for Navy. Surviving cancer is still the biggest victory of my life. And I did it with the help of three Bristol-Myers Squibb medicines. Today, Bristol-Myers Squibb researchers are fighting our most serious diseases. Their life-saving medicines have turned many cancer patients into cancer survivors. Medicines for AIDS, heart disease, and serious mental illness reflect their commitment to research and to extending and enhancing human life. I'm living proof of that. Hope, triumph, and the miracle of medicine. Bristol-Myers Squibb Company. Why would Bob Dylan break his long silence? The common perception was that I was either a drunk or a sicko. The answer in a rare interview, Sunday. Coming up, Earthlink Halftime Report. Tim Brando and Spencer Tillman will get you updated on a couple of PCS bowl bids still up for grabs. Tony Barnhart will join them to talk about Urban Meyer and all the big coaching changes in college football. That's coming up on the Earthlink Halftime Report. Our Commander-in-Chief, President George Bush, is on that Army sideline and projected great timing. I don't know if he'd want to be there in the first half or the second half. I guess he'll move to the side of the Navy part of the stadium yeah. here in the second half and two more smiles on yeah. this side of the stadium. Should be sure. a, a bit more jovial as President Bush gets over the Navy side on the second half as your Titus with a 12-yard touchdown catch. Army again on the short end of a route against Navy. A minute 15 to go in this second quarter. 28 to nothing. Midshipman. Blumenfeld to kick it off. Scott Wesley is waiting. He will take it from the three. And Wesley. Stays on his feet as he crosses the 30-yard line and just shy of the 35. That's a 30-yard return. The senior leaders, the experience is showing through this afternoon. Remember, this is their last Army-Navy game, and, and when we were talking to all three of these guys, you could see the fire in their eyes that how much they wanted to leave a mark on this particular game and how they wanted to leave with a good taste in their mouth. I think right now, Aaron Polanco has set the tone for the entire Navy team. He's having a fantastic game. And Polanco told us he's not a beat Army badly, but afterwards, there are no grudges. First down, Dahman throwing complete. Aaron Alexander. And he is angled out of bounds. Dahman has been trying to hook up with Alexander throughout the day. That is a 15-yard pass play for the Black Knights. Well, I've been in a halftime uh, with Bobby Ross, and uh, we have been down a few times, and will lay into these players. He will not stand for this. And he, he has a way of making players overachieve, and I'm sure that in the second half, we will be a completely different Army team. Out near midfield, the first and 10 out of the shotgun, Dahman. Dahman flushed out. Dahman, pump fake, will take it himself, and scoops out of bounds. It's a five-yard run, just short of the first down. 
as Dahman was trying to make a move upfield. 53 seconds left. I think back to 1984, I was a rookie with the Cincinnati Bengals, and my college roommate, my former college roommate, Frank Reich, was the quarterback for the University of Maryland Terrapins. And they were down, I believe, 31 to nothing to the Miami Hurricanes. And Bobby Ross threatened them at halftime that if you don't come back and show that you are a good football team, we will go back to Bird Stadium in Maryland, turn the lights on, and we will run a sprint for every point we lose by. On second and five, big play. It's Ulikowski, the tight end. Finally brought down inside the 20 by the safety to Juan Price. 45 seconds remain in this first half. Jack Thomas does a good job looking left, looking left, looking left, then comes back right and throws the ball quickly. That's exactly how you're supposed to do it as a quarterback. And now Army gets into their two-minute no-huddle offense. Longest catch of the season for Ulikowski, 30 yards. Here's Thomas. Thomas. Walks the tightrope along the sideline, and Dahman's making some plays with his legs. There comes a time, Ian, in a game where you just, you've had enough. And I think the Army players have had enough. And Zach Dahman has had enough. And he has to start playing and making plays. It's uh, a very important sequence right here. If they can get some momentum going into the locker room. Eight-yard tuck and run for Dahman, and a timeout. Right. Yeah. That was amazing. Let's do it. I'm good. Tired of waiting for your reward? With Thank You from City, you get great rewards that are easy to earn, easy to redeem. That's a card you can count on. Introducing the new char-grilled chicken sandwich from Chick-fil-A. Rebuilt from the wheat bun up. Add a refreshing Dasani water, and it's this year's biggest splash. Maybe leads it 28 to nothing, 33 seconds to play until halftime and a second and two for Army from the nine-yard line. As you can see right there, Army with two timeouts. No reason to panic. You just get the first down, and then you, you have every option you can still run it because of your timeouts mm -hmm. certainly you can throw it in the way that zach Thomas has played this last series here i wouldn't be surprised to see him make a spontaneous play or two i i think that he's fed up i think he's fed up with the performance of his offense because every play is a reflection of the quarterback and now it's time for him to inspire his mates into the end zone second and two three receiver set jones in the backfield out of the shotgun dominant Common throw, low throw, and it's handled nicely out there by Ulikowski. It's a three-yard gain and a first down for Army with 28 seconds to play. First half. Ulikowski making some nice plays. Not easy for a tight end running to the sideline to turn around and catch the ball at ankle level, but a nice catch right there by Army's big tight end. Junior from Katy, Texas. His father, Mike, graduated from the U.S. Military Academy back in 1975. Grandfather in the Air Force. Another grandfather served in the U.S. Army. This is a first and goal for the Black Knights out of the shotgun. Dahman looking to get Army on the board. Fires for the touchdown. The freshman, Jeremy Trimble. Army gets some points before the halftime break. And this play is made by the offensive line of Army that gives Zach Dahman, the quarterback, plenty of time to survey the field and has... Jeremy Timbo gets into the back of the end zone. Dahman fires the seed back there. And now all of a sudden, the Army quarterback playing with a little bit more confidence. On for the extra point, Justin Koenig. Koenig is the sophomore from Pennsylvania. Austin Miller has handled the kicking duties most of the season, and giving the youngster Koenig an opportunity as well. Matt Silva will hold it. And the extra point is through. Dahman to Trimble. First touchdown of the day for Army. Navy still with a big lead, 28 to 7, late second quarter. 
You've got to step up. Close out all of the pressure. Trust everything you've been taught. And just believe you can do it. You know, my first day on the job sure felt familiar. There are over 360,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. Navy 28, Army 7. 22 seconds remain in this second quarter. Lincoln Financial Field here in Philadelphia. 78th time this game has been played in Philly. Dahman, good showing on that drive for Army. When you talk about leadership, that's exactly what Zach Dahman did on that last series. Four for four, as you saw right there, for 54 yards. And he ran two times uh, for 13 yards. So, as I was saying, he, he was fed up, as I think the entire Army team probably felt like this is not representative of the way that we play, the new attitude that we have here. And at least in that last series, that young man right there, Zach Dahman, showed the spirit that Bobby Ross is trying to get from every player in that uniform. Bobby Ross tried Reggie Nevels at the QB position. Matt Silva was a possibility. And then Dahman in game four reemerged as the starter. Austin Miller kicking it off. And Navy back on the return. Anthony Piccioni with a 19-yard return for the midshipmen. Coming up Sunday on CBS, it begins with 60 Minutes, an interview with Bob Dylan, followed by Cold Cakes. Then, Joe Montagna, Gene Smart, star in the original holiday movie, A Very Merry Christmas. That Sunday, here on CBS, America's Most Watched Network. Bob Dylan's actually given an interview? Yeah, that's, that's a bit of a surprise. He doesn't give very many interviews, does he? Have to check that out Sunday here on CBS. 13 seconds to play, first half. Aaron Polanco trying to drive forward. Cameron Craig makes the tackle after the three-yard gain from the Navy quarterback, and that will do it. Senior leadership for Navy, but Army does get the touchdown before we hit the break. Navy with a 28-7 lead over Army, looking for three wins in a row against the Black Knights. Downstairs we go, and Dwayne Ballard. Coach Johnson, that second quarter, you dominated except for the last minute. Are you concerned about momentum? Well, at the last, uh, certainly we'd rather them not have scored at the end, but uh, we've got to go back in. We, we can play better than we play. We need to be more consistent. We're not rushing the passer on defense. And offensively, we need to try to get the running game going better. But uh, all in all, 28-7, I'm happy where we are. If we can play that way in the second half, it'll be good. We realize there's still 30 minutes to go. Thank you, Coach. Ian. All right, Dwayne, end of the first half. The score, Navy 28, Army 7. Time to head back to our New York studio. We send it over to Timmy B, Tim Brando. Thanks, Ian. Coming up on the Earthlink Halftime Report, Spencer and I will have all of today's scores and highlights, including, as of today, there's officially some new urban planning in Gainesville. After this word from your local... ...something to get rid of the football for Josh Smith. Read the play perfectly, takes it back. But I think this play had a profound effect on Zach Common because right after this, he came out. Mr. Perseverance, as he is known around the Black Knights locker room, came back and led his team on the, on the march for a touchdown. Halftime stats presented by the Hartford. The Army showed some confidence offensively early in this game and then had a couple of defensive stands as well. But all in all, we saw the power of Navy in the running game. I mean, that option is so difficult to defend. And we've seen that time and again from Navy with, with Echo leading the way and Aaron Polanco having a terrific first half. We'll see if they can keep it up. And there is Kyle Echo, who is just a massive human being and trying to tackle him. It's not an easy thing to do for the secondary of the Black Knights. Echo, big Eagles fan, as we mentioned. But as we walk into the meeting room, he did mention that he had a place in his heart for the old Cincinnati Bengals and won number seven, Boomer Esiason. He just wants more face time. Yeah, I think that's what it was <laughs> as well. Miller on the kickoff. And unreturnable, a touchback. Our QB comparison presented by Argent mortgage Polanco didn't throw it off him but he threw it effectively and not only that but the, you know some of the rushing yards that he ran for and made a key first down a great touchdown run a couple great blocks on the way but Zach Dahman Mr. Perseverance you can say what you want about his performance but that last series putting seven points on the board 
for Army really, I think, indicates the type of person he is. First play of the third quarter from the 20. Handoff to Kyle Echol, running over players. Strong run on first down as he crosses the 30-yard line. Caleb Campbell was unable to bring him down. It's a 12-yard <laughs> gain for Echol. Let's bring in Dwayne Ballin downstairs. Dwayne? Hi, and I talked to Coach Bobby Ross a few moments ago. He said offensively he's pretty happy with the way they are playing, but defensively they must stop giving up the big play. It is that simple. Boomer, I'm sure you've heard those words before. On first down, the flip goes to Eric Roberts, avoiding contact initially and then losing the ball. Army's got it at the 47-yard line. Cameron Craig. The sophomore from Garden City, Kansas. And as I said earlier, I am the thing that was going to be key for Army today was on defense creating turnovers. If you're going to, if you can't stop them, somehow you got to get the ball out of their hands, and that's exactly what happens here in Will Sullivan. I mean, actually, Cameron Craig falls right on it, but this is the thing that Army was hoping for. This is the great equalizer between teams that have records that are so opposite as these two football teams. It's the turnover. Deion Tarver with the stamp to jar the ball loose and give Army the football at the 42. Handoff to Carlton Jones. Trying to break to the clear, and Jones spun down just shy of the 35. Good block from the co-captain, Joel Glover. The respected leader of this offensive line. Interesting, Dwayne Bowen was saying how simple it is and how those are the words that Bobby Ross was speaking to his team. Well, I'm sure they were emphatically delivered in the locker room. And he, uh, don't be fooled by his small stature. Uh, he is a mountain of a man when he stands in front of you and tells you what he expects of you. And you just respond to him. And it's I've heard him often referred to as a grandfatherly type that you don't want to let down. Now, Bobby told us that the camaraderie on this year's Army team reminded him of a Maryland team that you played on. Well, we had great senior leadership. I was a junior when he got there. We had guys like Dave Pizzella and uh, Mike Corvino who are, who are our team captains who just wanted to win and wanted to be led by somebody who'd give us an opportunity to win, and that's exactly what Bobby Ross did for us at the university. First and 10 for Army after the run by Jones. Line of scrimmage to 32. Black Knights trying to batter their way back into it just underway in the third quarter at Lincoln Financial Field in Philly. On first down, draw play. Jones through a hole. Carton Jones remains on his feet and carries to the 20-yard line. That's a 12-yard burst for Jones. Offensive line, another outstanding job blocking up front, another Army first down. This is just a little draw play where they show pass, see the offensive linemen pick up their hands, it looks like a pass. Hopefully you're going to get the defense to get out of their lanes. That's exactly what happened to the Navy defensive line. And Carlton Jones, a huge hole. Jones, 5'9", 195 pounds, from Northern Vance High School, and a shifty running back who has been effective this afternoon despite the score, 28 to 7 Navy. On a first and 10. From the 20, Dominant handoff. Jones, Torres upfield and able to fight his way for about five. Jeff Vanek, first man there, the senior from Collegeville, Pennsylvania for Navy. When you watch Jones run with the football, it's not a lot of fancy stuff. It's one cut and go. Drop your head, go forward. And that's exactly what you want from your running back. You don't want any indecision, and certainly Carlton Jones hasn't shown it. 17 carries, 94 yards for Jones, and a second and five for Army. From the 15. Keep it on the ground. Jones tripped up. It was read perfectly by Mahoney, the talented sophomore. A surprise starter as a freshman. He is blossoming in his second year. And Buddy Green puts him on the end of the line. You see Mahoney at the top of your screen. Makes a nice shoe-top tackle. And when you're playing against running backs like Paul Jones, you have to make sure that you're going to stay at home and not over on the play. That time Mahoney got lucky. He made a good play, and Jones... Obviously fell to the ground. Mahoney told us being a leader at Annapolis comes with the territory. That's what they teach us there. And a third and eight now for Army. Handle the rush. 
Dahman steps up and throws underneath to Ulikowski. And Jared Ulikowski, a little bit short of the first down. Reddick and Smith collaborating to bring him down. You know, I am, as soon as Ulikowski started to get involved a little bit in the offense, all of a sudden they started moving the football, and a nice throw by Dahman. Low and in the gut. And he knows that is going to get hit from both sides, as does Ulikowski. It's a nice throw by Dahman. Gives him a better shot at a field goal here. They're not going to go for it on fourth down. They send out Justin Koenig. A sophomore, a high school soccer player, possesses a strong leg. Silver to hold it. 28 yard attempt. He missed it. Wide to the right. Bobby Ross's team desperately needed some points after the turnover. And they come up empty. And again, it goes back to the kicking game for both of these academies. It's definitely a shortcoming. 11.06 to go, third quarter. Score remains the same. Honey, wake up. It's Christmas. Time for presents. Come on, sleepyheads. Let's go. Presents. Yeah. This holiday, show her how excited you are about her with a beautiful gift of gold from K Jewelers because gold is the one language everyone understands. And you can be assured that she'll get the message. Wow. Wow. Every kiss begins with K. This holiday season, give that special someone on your list something they can't wait to use. Grab all your gifts and a tree to put them under. You can at the Home Depot. Hurry in. The exclusive Dremel 220-piece kit is now $29.99. A Ryobi 12-volt drill kit with stud sensor and 26-bit set is $59.97. Nobody has more know-how to help make your holiday dollars work harder. The Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. Mmm, something smells good. Delivery? It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. DiGiorno? Get out. You fixed the oven. You fixed the oven? <laughs> you are handy. I'm calling Mother. <laughs> pizza? Introducing DiGiorno Microwave Pizza. Rises up golden brown in minutes. For oven baked taste in a hurry, it's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Microwave. Microwave, huh? At least I fixed something. Houston tackles the Jets. New England drives into Cleveland. Or the top two teams in the AFC West. Denver and San Diego collide. Sunday on CBS. Black Knight 2 six. This is Black Knight 6. Quinn and Philly sighted Black Knight Town Square. Can't request it. Over. Well, lock and load, man. This is Black Knight 2-6, roger up. Black Knight 2-6, mission accomplished. Go Army, Green Well, they got the goat in captivity. <laughs> right now they've got a problem on the field. 28-7, Navy in front of Army. We are in the third quarter after the turnover. Army has nothing to show for it after the 28-yard miss from Koenig. It was interesting also, I and mean, why is fourth and one, why wouldn't you go for it? I, I think I probably would have gone for it after watching you know, the kicking escapades, but the, the fact is that Army's had trouble on fourth down tonight twice. One led to a touchdown. On first down, throwing. A shake and big move by Tomlinson after the pass from Polanco. And it covers six yards. Let's head to New York, get an update from Tim Brando. All right, Ian and Boomer, President Bush is with you guys in Philadelphia on the left coast. Another Bush, a one that really loves the W, Reggie, on the game's second play against UCLA, set sail 65 yards as the Trojans, number one with a bullet, lead UCLA. I guess both Bushes having pretty good years right now, Timmy B. 10, 30 to go in the third quarter, and a 28 to 7 lead. Here's Kyle Echo, first down and more for Navy. For the 45-yard line, Deion Tarver missed a chance to bring him down earlier. That's a 19-yard rumble for Echo. Next, big-time goal hopes. National title dreams are in the mix. Cadillac Williams and the Auburn Tigers take on Cedric Houston and the Tennessee Volunteers, the SEC Championship, presented by Dr. Pepper, DCS observers. Very interested in this one to see whether or not Auburn can continue its unbeaten season 
in the SEC. Coming up and here on CBS, on first down, running Polanco, driven backwards. Aaron Polanco got hit hard by Greg Washington. You know, I, I on that last play where we saw Kyle Eichel take the ball at the middle, normally we're watching him run over players. But as you said, Deion Tarver had a shot right at him in the middle of the field. And, and this is the thing that you love about Kyle Echo is that he can make guys miss. Now watch this shot right here by Washington. Well, that's how you hit a quarterback when he's in the open field. <laughs> that's why I never ran around in the open field like that. Washington will be participating in the East West game. Marvin Dingle is coming to the game. And Dingle gets the call, crossing midfield. Just his fifth carry of the season as Deion Tarver brought him down. Washington leading the nation in tackles per game, just about 13 and a half per contest. I asked him, what, what was it like to know that you're going to get into so many collisions? That's the way it is. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's what I live for. His uncle Larry is a Navy recruiter, but most of his family is Army. His uncle Craig, a Marine, currently serving in Iraq. On a third and four, Eckler is back in there. Polanco, quick throw, and nobody home. He was looking for Tomlinson out on the perimeter. Incomplete. And maybe a miscommunication as well. Well, certainly the Army defense is coming out of the locker room, fired up, forcing a turnover, and now a punt by Navy. So Army's defense has slowed down this Navy offensive machine the first two series of the second half. Return man, Scott Wesley. Wesley is the junior from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Eric Sheen, the punter for Navy. And returnable kick at the 20. Excellent coverage down the field from the midshipman, limiting Wesley to a one-yard gain. Rob Caldwell making the play for Navy on special teams. Dahman will get another crack at this Navy defense. 28 to 7, the mids with the lead here in the third quarter. With faster acceleration than a BMW 325XI and an Audi TT, the all-new Hemi-powered Jeep Grand Cherokee conquers the road like a sports car. And with our exclusive Quadra Drive 2 four-wheel drive system, it conquers everything else like a trail-rated Jeep 4x4. Your life. Log on to the Life Accelerator at Navy.com. The Home Depot College Football on CBS is sponsored by DiGiorno. The Hartford Mutual Funds. Wrangler. And by America Online. Navy in front here in Philadelphia, etched on the wall in Memorial Hall on the campus of the Naval Academy. The names of graduates that have paid the ultimate sacrifice for their country. Sadly, three names recently were added to those former Navy players. The team honoring them, preparing the lockers of their fallen brothers, Scott Zellum, class of 91, Ron Winchester, 2001 graduate, and J.P. Blecksmith, class of 2003, who was killed on November 11th. And our thoughts and prayers go out to those families. Wayne Ballin will join us momentarily with a special guest. 8.37 mark of the third. On first down, Dahman throwing. An out route to Jeremy Trimble. 
and out of bounds quickly as we go downstairs to Dwayne. Thank you. I, I am with Ron Ch Winchester's father. Mr. Winchester, thank you, sir, for joining us. What did this game mean to Ron? This game was an accumulation of his whole season and uh, everything he looked forward to. Uh, this was the Super Bowl for him, and everything came together that he was going to learn and work with his teammates and go on from there. What is your most vivid memory of Ron in this game? Well, actually, there was two of them. It actually, it was in his last game. In his last game, he actually went head-to-head -head with his best friend we went to high school with. And at the end of the game, after they had won, they were leaving the field. He led his teammates back to the stands to the family section, and they climbed in the stands. And it was in a very emotional year that year because there wasn't a very lot of wins. Thank you, sir. Our best to you and your family. Thank you. Ian? All right, Mr. Winchester, Dwayne, thank you very much. Your jerseys draped over empty chairs in the locker room and also along the sideline. Those three fallen comrades represented today for the Naval Academy. Handoff to Colton Jones, and Jones trying to accelerate after the first down. He picks up four yards. Boomer, just to follow up, J.P. Blecksmith played with a number of these players on Navy. We had a chance to speak with them earlier this week, and anytime those names came up, you could see the emotion on their faces thinking about their experiences. You know, it's really hard to put it into words, but it, it kind of shows you exactly what this game is all about and where these guys are headed. Now, these seniors are going to be deployed and they're going to be on the front lines protecting our country. And you understand that they understand that it is all about sacrifice. Flags come down, certainly for these players wanting to savor this time before facing a sobering Prior reality. Snap, false start, 88 of the offense. Five-yard penalty is still second down. Now, these two academies are in the business of training real heroes, not just football heroes, but the reality that many of these graduates are going to face within a year's time. They're amazing young men and women, because, yes, there are women at both of these academies. Most of them are enrolled post-9-11, knowing what our country is dealing with, and you can't say thank you enough to them and their families. Second and 11, Dahman, handoff, Cotton Jones, and Josh Smith, one of those seniors, firing through to make the play a loss of three. You talk about senior leadership, it is about Josh Smith, who missed this game last year because of the appendicitis, but comes in unblocked, and that's exactly, you stick, the, you stick your face right into the chest of the ball carry, and you wrap him up and take him down. What a terrific play by Josh Smith. So he's playing it's like his last army navy game this means a lot for this young man he has led navy in tackles for three consecutive years and a third and 14 now for army Dominic deep drop Dominic first out of the pocket flat down Dominic trying to run on his own and josh smith again makes the play looked like a hold along that offensive line as they were trying to buy time for Dominic exactly what it is it will be declined and army will have to punt the football don't see a lot of penalties for Navy holding number 74 of the offense that penalty is refused fourth down survivor week kicks off with a bang the winner of this challenge ends up in the final four guaranteed and Sparks will fly at the Tribal Council, so you won't want to miss a new Survivor Thursday at 8, 7 Central, and the season finale next Sunday on CBS, America's most watched network. Tomlinson. Two punt returns already today, and Dyron Fort will move the way for Arnie. Spiraling punt, Tomlinson moves forward, and it takes a bounce along the sidelines, flag down. It rolls to the 37-yard line, a 30-yard punt. Penalty marker was quickly thrown as Tomlinson moved forward trying to field it. You know, sometimes you can't tell if he's calling the fair catch. We saw that earlier, that late fair catch signal. Well, the same thing happens here. The arm goes up, and Army was unable to pull back. We have interference with the opportunity to catch a kick. 
against the kicking team, 15 yards from the spot, first down. And yet another penalty against Army, and you talk about coaching and how you're looking to see whether or not the team is coached very well. Listen, maybe the second least penalized team in the country. Well, that shows there's a reason why they're eight and two, and little things add up for Navy and Army. I'd like to experience a total system meltdown. I'd like to lose all of my music files. I would really love to get a virus and give it to all my friends. Millions of Americans are just asking for a computer virus because they're not nearly as protected as they think they are. I'd like it if someone stole my identity. That's why America Online now gives away virus protection to all our members, absolutely free. That'd be great. Thank you. Want a better internet? You belong at America Online. Stronger denim, more comfortable, relaxed fit. Wrangler five-star premium quality denim. Wrangler, real comfortable jeans. Now through Sunday, Zales is having a diamond sale where you can save up to 50% off. Plus, take up to an extra $500 off on Diamond Store Wide at Zales, the diamond store. In a world where unfortunate events happen to people all the time. How very, very awful. How unfortunate it would be to not have that insurance. Oh. Lemony Snicket's a series of unfortunate events. <laughs> In theaters December 17th. <laughs> Affleck, how unfortunate it would be not to have it. All Frank Griffin wants for Christmas is his wife back. A homewrecker. You gotta learn to deal. I know. Joe Montaigne and Gene Smart. A very married Christmas. CBS Sunday. Navy with a 28 to 7 advantage on Army. 5:59 to go in the third. Time for Aflac trivia. Your Army leads the all-time series with Navy. Mark of 49, 48, and 7. When was the last time this series was tied? We'll have the answer coming up. Navy back-to-back -back bowl games went to the Houston Bowl last year, a 38-14 loss to Texas Tech. Go to the Emerald Bowl out of the West Coast in San Francisco, take on New Mexico. And right now a first down at midfield. No game on first down, Kyle Eckel. Trey Landry making the stop. Coming up Sunday on 60 Minutes, why would Bob Dylan break his long silence and do his first television interview in 19 years? There's only one way to find out. Watch 60 Minutes Sunday. I think he says he never wanted to be a prophet or a savior. I don't know what that means. But no, actually, he started when I was born, 1961. He's been for a long time. You're a big Dylan guy? I am now. <laughs> Growing on... Second down to Corey Dryden. And Dryden forced near the sideline by Ray Stitt. And they gain 10 yards on the play. Well, Aaron Polanco's having quite a game. He's probably throwing a little bit more than we expected coming into this game, but he's been the catalyst for this offense. Certainly, you have to pay a lot of attention to the fullback, Kyle Echol. But when this kid gets out on the outside, he can make plays happen, and we've seen it all night long. And they're moving the ball once again. Right inside the 40-yard line. Hand it off. Echo breaks one tackle. Here's Echo out across the 25. And down to the turf with the 22. Tommy Ryan had a chance initially to make the stop. Could not. So we have scouts from the Packers, the Jets, and also the 49ers. And this is what they're looking at. They want to see whether or not this kid is the real deal. Fullbacks break, break tackles just like that. He has the speed to get through the initial line of scrimmage right here, but watch how he lowers his left shoulder. Kind of shapes John Riggins like, isn't it? Mark Van Egan, yeah. 16 for 106 for Echo, and he can add to it as he sticks the helmet down and carries to the 15-yard line. Tarver and Maimone combined. That's a seven-yard gain for Kyle Echo. And we did talk to a couple of NFL scouts that are here a little bit earlier, right before the game, and they said they were here to see this young man. Right now, as it stands, they think that he is definitely a draftable player. He is the number one, possibly number two, fullback on the board, which means somewhere between four 
and round six. Round four and round six. Second and three. Echol. Little bit jump. And creates some extra running room for a first down. Now, Kyle Echol, one thing he was so proud of, and all of these seniors were proud of, the fact that they were the class to help turn this around. And the sense of pride you get from looking back, if maybe continues on the upswing, they had a big part of it. Well, they, they have been the lifeblood of it because they were here prior to the arrival of Paul Johnson, and he has really counted on them very heavily. More of Echol steady diet on this drive as all the white jerseys come in to converge on Kyle Eckley. And you have to realize that these military academies, that they don't redshirt, they don't get junior college transfers. It's very difficult to get into these schools. Uh, they have 12-hour days minimum. It is not for the faint of heart. This is the best of the best, folks. These are our future leaders, and rightfully so. When you sit and you talk to these young men, you are impressed. And I'm telling you, it just did my heart good to meet them and listen to their stories. Second and eight. Fake the handoff. Polanco throws wide open. Eric Roberts. Touchdown, Navy. Well, that's what this triple off option offense does to you. You are so focused on Kyle Echol, Kyle Echol, Kyle Echol. Nice little play action pass. Deion Tarver and Kurt Daniels, the safeties, come up. And they allow the easy completion over the back of them. You can't blame them. Polanco is now 7 of 10 for 100 yards through the air. Two touchdowns, no picks. Extra point from Blumenfeld. Navy has topped last year's point total. They're on the verge of doing it. They've matched it. It's 34 to 7. Navy. 35 to 7. Last year they scored 34. When you can create your own holiday seafood feast, a meal turns into a celebration. Only Red Lobster lets you create your own favorite holiday feast by combining two or three of your seafood favorites. Choose from 11 signature dishes, including our very best sweet and tender snow crab. And remember, this holiday season, you can treat the seafood lovers on your list to a Red Lobster gift card. For the seafood lover in you. Success comes from flawless performance at every opportunity. Ask your mortgage broker about an Argent loan. The all-new Jeep Grand Cherokee. With Quadra Drive 2, our most advanced four-wheel drive system ever, a 5.7-liter Hemi V8, and our new electronic stability program. The off-road legend continues on-road. Auburn had a perfect regular season, and now they look to keep their hopes alive to play for the national title when they battle Tennessee. The SEC Championship, next on CBS. The Home Depot College Football on CBS is sponsored by Jeep, the official vehicle of the 105th Army-Navy game. Once again, Navy pouring it on. A 35-7 lead on Army. Seven plays, 50 yards. Roberts, nine-yard touchdown reception. Second toss of the day for Polanco. A lot of Kyle Echol on that drive as well. So they mixed it up, setting you up with the run, and then throwing the pass for the score. That's the danger with looking in the backfield. And when you have somebody like Kyle Echol or Eric Roberts or even Aaron Polacco that have run the ball so effectively today as a defense, you're so overwhelmed and consumed by that that there are going to be times where they pull out the old run-action pass and bang, there's going to be somebody wide open. And today I... This Army defense is, is feeling that pressure, feeling that frustration. And the frustration also emanates from the fact that 
Navy is the most like them. Physically, they feel like they should be able to compete with this team. There are no excuses about going up against bigger players or potentially better athletes. Here's Wesley on the return. Wesley breaking out across the 35-yard line. Foot race across 50-yard line. Here's Wesley down the sideline and first out of bounds. Scott Wesley taking it into Navy territory as Paul Kelly chased him. Finally, Scott Wesley gets a chance to make a play here. It's been a rough day for him to be turning kicks, and this one he finally takes up. Breaks right up the middle right here. Nice blocking at the point of attack, and then takes off. And I think they might have gotten away with a little bit of a hold right there. Mm -hmm. Wesley takes it down the sideline. 72-yard return and a first and 10 for Army at the 26-yard line. Double tight end set. Tyler Robinson in the backfield. And here's Dominic. Makes the handoff. Step up. Feels the pressure. Coach one. Two far for Aaron Alexander. Incomplete. And a short touchdown if you could have found him in the corner. I know that Zach Dominic would love to have this one back because this is... You don't get many opportunities like this. you got to make the most of them. And it's a little bit too much mustard on it, I think. If he just flies, floated up there a little bit, it's an easy touchdown. Sometimes you rush the issue and put a little bit too much on it, and unfortunately, it's an incomplete. And a second and 10 for the Black Knights. 235 remaining in the third quarter. Navy with a big lead, 35 to 7. Alexander, the motion man. Play out. Dominic. Set up the screen for Robinson. Has some blockers. Robinson with a flag down. Spilled out across the 15-yard line. Penalty marker on the play. Nice little catch and run for Tyler Robinson. Jack Childress. The flag was thrown for contact down the field. However, the pass did not cross the line of scrimmage in flight. There is no flag. So the play stands for Army as we wrap up our AFLAC trivia. So just to remind you about the question, Army leads the all-time series with Navy. When was the last time the series was tied? The answer, 1992. I have to go back 12 years. Navy on the verge of possibly changing that number to 2004. Coming up on two minutes to go on the third. First and ten for Army after the screenplay. Dahman, rush coming. Dahman, thrown down. Josh Smith has been all over the field for the midshipmen. And Zach Dahman helps him here a little bit, Ian. As if he just steps up, he will not get sacked, but he is forced to the right for whatever reason. Sometimes it's just ghost and... Josh Smith is sitting right there waiting for the tackle. No reason to leave the pocket. Just step up and deliver the football, but he likes to move outside the pocket. Smith is right there. And a loss of 12 on the play. Second sack of the season for Smith. On second and 22, Dominic pass knocked down. Baba Twinde Akinbebe. <laughs> I just like saying the name. I know you like to say that name, and... There isn't a better kid on the, on the Navy team. This kid was terrific when we, when we spoke to him. And again, remember, he came to the Naval Academy as an outside linebacker, then a defensive end, and now is down where he says the sloppy people are. In the middle, he's the nose tackle, and a nice play by Akin... Who? Who? <laughs> Akin Bemi. Akin Bemi, that's it. Call him Tunde. That's what he likes to be called. Okay, yeah. Right, actually, Akin or Tunde. Third and 22 now for Army. There's Dom. Again, the rush. Dominic throws as he was hit from behind. Incomplete. David Mahoney this time bursting through to apply the pressure. You hear a lot about the Navy offense, and rightfully so, but this defense has got some players of its own, as we're seeing right here. A nice inside pass rush by Mahoney. As he gets right inside of that, Adam Ojik. And Pretty impressive team that Paul Johnson's put together here. Offense, defense, and 
You would think that he would be a hot prospect to go to a new school, wouldn't you? That's not the topic I'm going to get you to talk about as we continue along here. So many openings around college football. Fourth and 22, it's where you see a team go for it in the third quarter. But Army will trailing 35 to 7. Fourth down and 22. Dominant to the end zone. Little pushing and shoving. Aaron Alexander and Vaughn Kelly. Incomplete. Army's looking for a pass interference down, down in the end zone. I, a little incidental contact, maybe. I guess you could say that Kelly probably got his hand on Alexander right there, but a little push. Well, Kelly able to make the play. And here's the offensive line right here. There's Tunde right there. Non-stop, relentless. Exactly what you want from your nose tackle. And Army turns it over on downs. Maybe takes over a first and ten at their own 24. Polanco spins. Polanco gets clobbered as he crossed the 30-yard line by Greg Washington. And it's a seven-yard scamper by the quarterback, Aaron Polanco. Those are the little things that Aaron Polanco's been doing all day long here. And every time there's a tackle, it seems like number 16's around there for the, for the cadets. And uh, Washington's having a heck of a game in terms of numbers of tackles and how many collisions he's been a part of. But unfortunately, he's on the short end of the scoreboard. 30 seconds to play in the third. Kyle Eckel, flag down. And Echol turns around as the play was whistled dead. We could have seen that 4-5 speed on display right there. Prior to the snap, there was a false start. Right guard of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty. It's still second down. Penalty against Navy Tuesday on NCIS. A serial killer is loose on the web. Now the Naval Criminal Investigative Service must send out one of their own into his domain. Mark Harmon stars in a new episode of NCIS. That's Tuesday at 8, 7 Central on America's most watched network, CBS. Second and nine for Navy after the call. Echol stays in there. There's Polanco back to throw. Tip ball and incomplete with eight seconds to play in the third. Eric Roberts had an opportunity as he glanced off his fingertips. Now, what about Paul Johnson and other opportunities? Should he be getting some calls around big-time programs? Listen, he's a terrific football coach, and I think the record indicates that. But the question would, that I would have <clears throat> hiring him would be, are you going to bring this offense to my major university? Mm -hmm. now, unfortunately, major universities aren't looking for option offenses. They're looking for guys that can throw the football down the field. And, you know, I, I think he's a terrific football coach, and he could probably coach at a much higher level if he'd like. There's Polanco. He is devoured back at the 20-yard line. Seth Lotz combining with Ryan Johnson. Johnson, the senior from Berwick, Pennsylvania. End of the third quarter. Navy with a 35-7 lead on Army. We'll come back to Philadelphia right after this message. And a word from your local station. Can you hear me now? Good. Now. Good. Good. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Good. We ask Good. the same question Good. over and over. Can you hear me now? So that you don't have to. Good. Verizon Wireless has fewer dropped calls than any other wireless network. Good. Can you hear me now? It's what makes us the most reliable wireless network in the nation. Now. 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 Can you hear me now? now? Can you hear me now? Good. Verizon Wireless. Can you hear me now? We never stop working for you. Good. The Rose Bowl. New Year's Day, 100,000 fans will pack this place. Impressive number. Allstate has their own impressive number. One million. That's about how many drivers switched to Allstate last year. Enough to fill ten Rose Bowls. Why? Many of them saved an average of $278 a year. Now that calls for a parade. Championship insurance for less. That's Allstate, Stan. Are you in good hands? The Amazing Race Team stormed through Africa. Let's go, let's go! Are the wrestlers so strong yeah! that the others might quit? I can't see! Don't miss the new Amazing Race Tuesday. Numbers, a new drama coming in January to CBS. Thank you, Central Ohio, for making 10TV Eyewitness News number one.
in November. The most watched morning newscast. The most watched at noon. The most watched on the weekends. And the most watched at 5, 6, and 11. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for making 10 TV Eyewitness News Central Ohio's number one newscast in every key time period. Just one more reason we're Central Ohio's news leader. I'm, I'm here, here today, today to, to announce, announce something, something brand, brand new from Arby's. Arby's. Hey, wait, wait a second. You haven't even seen it yet. Introducing Arby's new Market Fresh Low Carbies Wraps, featuring the new Chicken Club Wrap, Dice Grilled Chicken, Natural Cheddar, Thick Cut Pepper Bacon, and Honey Mustard. All in a soft wheat wrap made fresh when you order. Lots of flavor without a lot of Carbies. Okay, who ate it? Try any of Arby's new line of Market Fresh Low Carbies Wraps, featuring the new Chicken Club Wrap. On the next CSI Weekends. Murder at the Monaco Hotel. Woman found bound in a room. Stripped and strangled. A serial killer is on the loose. That hotel crime scene was staged to look like the signatures. Who never leaves a trail. Amazing. He's X. Is bound to strike again. I think he knows his next victim. Signature killers always know their next victim. But they don't know him until he tortures, rapes, and kills them. CSI Weekends. Saturday at 12.30 a.m. on 10 TV. The Patriots and the Browns, Sunday at 1 on 10 TV. For the ninth straight year, CBS Sports is proud to present the Army-Navy Classic. Live from Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's 35 to 7 Navy. They've controlled the action the last two years. And similar storyline here today. Hyde Eagle, Boomer Esiason, Dwayne Ballin, our entire CBS sports crew. Eric Shuey will punt it for Navy. Scott Wesley standing at his own 40 yard line for Army. Just starting the fourth quarter. And Navy with a big lead. Rush coming, Shuey gets rid of it. Wesley comes forward, fields it nicely, out across the 35. Here's Wesley, almost broke a kick return, and this time on a punt return, he gives Army outstanding field position. Rob Caldwell makes the stop on special teams. 35 to seven, Navy with the lead on Army. Just underway here in the fourth quarter. Looks like Wesley's trying to win the game all by himself. <laughs> a couple nice returns for that young man. He's got a quick burst. He showed that on a couple of occasions, the junior. And now Army sets up shop with a first and 10 at the 33. Dominic drawing over the middle. And good grab by Aaron Alexander as we head downstairs. Dwayne Ballard. Hi, and one of the things that has been going on in the Philadelphia area is called Operation Gratitude. Several area organizations have been involved. What they're doing is collecting food for troops that are stationed overseas. It's really comfort food, great stuff, you know, like Snickers bars, things like that. Yum yum, good stuff that you don't get when you're overseas. Well, that, that's the kind of stuff you look forward to. Yum yum? Well, Snickers bars. Snickers bars, definitely. I don't know about yum yum, but... But it's great that they do that, and it's great to, to feel the emotion that's in this stadium. The president is here, as we saw earlier, and the way the whole city of Philadelphia embraces this particular spectacle, because it is more than a football game. Second straight year that this city has hosted the Army-Navy game. Long-term commitment with Lincoln Financial Field. Handoff to Carlton Jones sliding across the 20-yard line for a gain of six and a first down for the Black Knights. Still have a long way to go to get back into this game, but they're trying to save face and remain competitive with Navy. Bobby Ross knows the kind of challenge that he faces in trying to turn this Army program around. Shotgun, Dominic. Dominic fires to Nevels. Former QB now playing wideout for Army. Yeah, Bobby Ross actually invited 75 freshmen to practice and looked out at the, the Corps of Cadets. Wait a minute, there's 4,000 people here. There's got to be somebody here that can play some football, so they had open tryouts. Mm -hmm. And in fact, Gary Witten, a backup fullback who played on 
the spirit team emerged as a member of the varsity. Thrown to the end zone, knocked away. Hunter Reddick, the sophomore, in a matchup with Aaron Alexander. And the midshipman defensive back wins that mini battle. Nice play by Reddick as he goes up, finds the football, and knocks it down. A lot of times you'll see defensive backs playing taller receivers have their back turned to the quarterback, but Reddick didn't do it there. You know, also the importance of Ross to use the prep school, Navy as well. You don't have a red shirt, and that's you're basically your only red shirt to get a look at some young players before they actually get to the academy. Third and seven. Here's Dom. flip. It's caught by Jones. Makes one move, and Jones is going to come up short of the first down. A five-yard gain through the air. Did you see Jones right there as Army's going to have to go for it here? You can see him looking down the field, and he was looking for number 33. And that was Josh Smith, who's been all over the place for Navy today. Timeout Army. Navy. Up there. Now, it's time for the block of the day, presented by Earthlink. Let's watch August Royce, right guard, right here, number 74. He's going to get two blocks. There's number one. And watch him turn inside. There's number two as Aaron Polanco goes in for the touchdown. August Royce, right guard, doing exactly what you're supposed to do. For more on Earthlink's block of the day, log on to cbssportsline.com slash earthlink. Hey, Jim. Oh, hey, Ronnie. What's that? Ronnie, lately I've been wanting faster internet. So I got an Earthlink high-speed connection. Seems kind of crazy to me. This downloading up to 70 times faster than the regular dial-up crazy, Ronnie? Touche, Jim. But what if I don't want a crazy thing on top of my head? It's not even real, Ronnie. Just a marketing device. Just help remind people of Earthlink. Speed, security, control. That's Earthlink High Speed. Right now, get three months of Earthlink High Speed for just $19.95 a month. Earthlink revolves around you. Waiting for your reward? With thank you from City, you get great rewards that are easy to earn, easy to redeem. That's a card you can count on. The NFL Today catches up with San Diego's quarterback, Drew Brees, and with New England's running back, Corey Dillon, the show that's always ahead of the game. The NFL Today, Sunday on CBS. Don't forget, coming up, 2004 SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper. Auburn meets Tennessee live from Atlanta. Vern Lundquist, Todd Blackledge. Tracy Wolfson, that's coming up next here on CBS. Well, that, that's impressive. Well, I'm not sure what he thinks about it, but it's enjoyable from a viewer standpoint. It separates him from the other viewers. <laughs> on a fourth and three. Army in a big hole, 35 to seven. Motion man, Reggie Nevers. On fourth down, Dahman after the timeout. The rollout and the throw. Tip and incomplete. Looking for Alexander. Bobby McLaren able to make the play. McLaren inching closer to his wedding day. He's engaged to Kate. Get married June the 15th, 2005. The new Jeep Liberty Renegade. With command track four-wheel drive, a 3.7-liter Powertech V6 engine, and Jeep trail-rated capability, it never backs down from a challenge.
we all took the oath. We all wear the uniform. What's changed is our equipment, our technology, and that's important. But the spirit of a soldier, that's never changed. That's never going to change. And that's what makes the difference. The Home Depot College Football on CBS is sponsored by Jeep. Thank you from City, the United States Army, and by Earthlink. Back in Philadelphia for the last two years, Aaron Polanco watched his predecessor at quarterback Craig Candido for Navy put up big numbers. Well, Polanco is etching his name into the Army Navy history books. He really is, I, and he's taking a page right out of Candido's book, and he's doing it through the air and on the ground, and more importantly, he has just been a great leader today and has made all the plays. And the one thing about this game, you don't see any trash talking, you don't see any end zone celebrations, you're not going to see any of these players talk back to the coaches. This is a game the way it's supposed to be played. And both of these teams, regardless of who is winning, are going to play their guts out all the way until the end. It, there's no give up in any of these in any of these players. 35 to 7 Navy on first down We're on the option and Polanco quickly bottled up at the 15-yard line by Cameron Craig. Yeah, Tyson Stahl, the left tackle for Navy. His brother Hoot graduated from Naval Academy back in 2001. He is serving as a Marine in Iraq. Tyson told us he got an email from Hoot on Monday wanting to wish him luck against Army, biggest game of the season. And the interesting thing about Tyson here is he came to Navy as a defensive lineman, and Paul Johnson moved him to an offensive tackle. Off the middle. Echol. Physical running style as he crosses the 20, up near the 25. <laughs> Eight-yard game. We were talking to Paul Johnson. He said, you know, he wasn't very happy when we went to move him, but as soon as he started playing, he became real happy, and that's what it's all about for these kids, getting an opportunity to play. And his brother lettered for the Naval Academy, 1998 to 2000, Edward Hoopstall. And we talked to Tyson about his mother. He said his mom worries herself sick. Any Marine's mom is deeply affected by the current state of affairs. She asked Tyson, can't you just break your knee? Go be a supply officer somewhere. You don't have to be a Marine. Losing the football, Polanco, but he's able to cover up for Navy. And I, and I know how his mom obviously feels, but that's not happening with these people. These players are special people, as I keep telling you here today. And, and when you sit and you talk to them and you listen to them about how much they believe in what they're doing, where they're going to school, what the brotherhood is all about, then I think you can understand why they're going to do what they do. And actually, who does I believe, on his second tour of duty right now. They got to spend one semester together, and it lifted their relationship to an even higher level. Handoff. Echol tripped up as it hits the 25 by Will Sullivan. Back to New York. Tim Brando. Hi, and then Boomer. It could be getting a bit interesting in Tinseltown. USC punter Tom Malone actually outkicks his coverage here. And Craig Bragg will have a little something to um, about. 96 yards he goes to make it a 10-7 game. USC holding on at number one. Back to I. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that one, Tim. And obviously, USC feels like they are right on the verge of yet another championship. They've got to take care of business first. Eckel gets the call and fights his way forward. He picks up a yard, yard and a half. You know, that doesn't seem like much, but when you see Kyle Eckel make the first guy miss and he never stopped churning his legs and always fall forward and that's exactly the type of that attitude that you want from a fullback and that's why NFL scouts are here to look at him. 22 carries 132 yards touchdown for Echo. Well, you could have a big one too that was called. No. He stopped play as he was ripping one off for 60 plus. Eric Shuey to punt it and Wesley back deep to receive it at the 35. High punt. And 
Wesley, no fair catch, and he is quickly hit. Marco Nelson showing off his speed down the field for the midshipman. 9.56 to play. We're in the fourth quarter. Navy in control. This holiday season, give that special someone on your list something they can't wait to use. Grab all your gifts and a tree to put them under. You can at the Home Depot. Hurry in. The exclusive Dremel 220-piece kit is now $29.99. A Ryobi 12-volt drill kit with stud sensor and 26-bit set is $59.97. Nobody has more know-how to help make your holiday dollars work harder. The Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. This is the Fidelity Investments CBS Sports Desk. Hello, everybody. I'm Tim Brando, and welcome to the Fidelity Investment CBS Sports Desk. Today in college football, number one USC came out blazing the second play from scrimmage. Reggie Bush takes a handoff. This has been the problem in the Pac-10 all year. Defense, he carves them up 65 yards for touchdown. The Bruins just added a 96-yard punt return. It's 10 to 7. As far as BCS bids go, the ACC claimed by Virginia Tech. Brian Randall hits Eddie Royal for the gamer in Miami. They take out the Kings by six. And in the Big East, Pittsburgh's Tyler Palco had five touchdown passes, three of them to Greg Lee to win the Big East bid. In other news, the U.S. doubles team of Bob and Mike Bryan defeated Spain's Juan Carlos Ferrero and Tommy Robredo in straight sets to keep the U.S. team's hopes alive in the 2004 Davis Cup Final. That's all for now from the Fidelity Investment CBS Sports Desk. Let's get you back to RV Navy. This has been the Fidelity Investment CBS Sports Desk. Welcome back. Navy leads Army 35-7. I am joined by Secretary Harvey, who was just appointed a couple of weeks ago. What do you think of this? This is your first Army-Navy. This is my first Army-Navy game. What an experience. This is something I'll never forget. I've never seen anything like it. You just feel the tradition in your blood and your body, so I'm very pleased to be here. Secretary Harvey of the Army, what does this mean to the troops stationed around the world? What does this game mean? It means, uh, it means uh, everything to them, and I want to take this opportunity to thank our soldiers for their sacrifice and service to our great country. They are winning the war on global terrorism. They are preserving peace and democracy. I'm very proud of them, and I'm very pleased and honored to be the 19th Secretary of the Army, and I'm looking forward to doing my part. Uh, in serving our great country. Thank you, Secretary Harvey. Hi. Hi, Dwayne. Thank you very much. Secretary Harvey as well. 9.46 to go on the fourth. And a first down throw from Zach Dahman to Aaron Alexander. Line of scrimmage is now the 48. Navy with the big lead, 35 to 7. Dahman operating out of the gun. And Dahman will throw the short one to the flat. Carlton Jones angled out of bounds by Akinbemi. And a three-yard gain on the swing pass. Well, again, you know, you go back to the point where these guys will not give up. They're just going to continue to play hard. They're not even going to worry about what the score is. And you know, I go back to my uh, initial talk with Bobby Ross when he was saying how these are the types of kids that you really want to coach because they listen, they'll respond to you, they never talk back, and they're always on time. We have an interesting story about a guy that was late. Second and seven. We'll tell you about that in a moment. Dominic throwing. And it's incomplete. In fact, there was a meeting set up between Bobby Ross and one of the freshmen, Brandon Thompson, and it was Bobby Ross who actually wasn't there on time. And sheepishly, Thompson comes up and says, Coach, are we supposed to be meeting five minutes ago? Oh! <laughs> I think I forgot about that one, son. There was another player, not to be named, who did who was late for a meeting. And Bobby was going to discipline, and then Bobby kind of forgot to discipline him, and that player came back to Bobby and said, Coach, uh, you have to discipline me. I was late for a meeting. <laughs> that would never happen no, anywhere else. Doesn't happen. 9, 26 to go. And Donovan running with the ball as he accelerates out across the 40-yard line and a first down for Army. You, you could see that gleam in the eye of Bobby Ross, the experience that he's had this year, and Maybe Army supporters thought there would be more than two wins, but it was a step forward after going 0-13 in 2003, the worst season in school history. This is the 115th year 
of Army football. Out of the shotgun, Dahman guns it near side to Reggie Neville. And quickly out of bounds. It's an eight-yard game. 9.07 to go in the fourth. 35 to 7, Navy in front. Bobby Ross talked about that military background. Both of his sons attended academies, Naval Academy for Kevin, Chris. His other son went to Air Force. And a second and two. Donald throwing to Jeremy Trimble. And another first down for Army. Penalty marker on the play out around the 25-yard line. Two penalties today on Navy. And the Army penalties continue to add up. That will be number seven against the Black Knights. The result of the play was a first down. After the end of the play, there was a dead ball, personal foul, number 67 of the offense. That's a 15-yard penalty. The result will be a first and 10. That's Pete Beard. Coming up tonight on CBS, the night of drama and mystery. Don't miss NCIS at 48 Hours Mystery. Tonight on CBS, America's most watched network. First and 10 as they back it up. To the 41 yard line. Dahman under a rush. Steps up, throws. High toss caught by Alexander. He's wrapping up his senior season. Native of Louisiana, tall and rangy wide receiver at 6'6", 199 co-captain of this Army football team. Yeah, they've ran this play a few times now in the second half, and they've been successful with it. They've been able to move Dahman a little bit of, out of the pocket, get away from that defensive line, who's actually batted, I would say, what, six, maybe seven balls today? I think you're right. Akin Demi has been involved in at least three of them. Dahman, he drops. Dahman steps up. Looking to throw the long ball. Dahman throws incomplete. Trimble with a diving attempt in the back of the end zone, covered by Dewan Price, a sophomore. And what you're seeing now is a three-man rush by Navy, and they're actually getting pressure on Dahman. So when he breaks the pocket, there are eight guys in the secondary, and it's very crowded back there. He can't run with it because the linebackers are sitting right there at about five yards deep waiting for him to run with it, and he's trying to force it deep. 35 to 7. I gotta tell you, I'd be doing the same thing. Now a second and ten for Army. Black Knights trailing the midship 35 to 7. On the game, Tyler Robinson. If to accelerate through the hole and then drop down out across the 20-yard line. Well, you get all kinds here for Army Navy. Certainly, the veterans are well represented. Interesting in my house, uh, my uncle Alan, my godfather, he was on the USS Nevada during Pearl Harbor, the youngest ensign in the Navy at that time, and then my father was a corporal artillery man in the Army. So you can imagine what we were dealing with in my house. Now, right now, your uncle's pretty happy. Well, I'm sure he is. And I'll tell you that uh, they were very proud of their service. And my uncle often told me about the difficulties of that day, December 7th, 1941. And you know, there's something about giving service to your country that makes you feel a certain passion and, and a, a certain emotion that, you know, many of us that haven't done that, you know, are missing in our lives. 8-11 to go on the fourth. Dahman with a deep drop in the pocket, stepping up and throwing. Out across the 10-yard line. And Army moving the football, but now the clock becomes the factor under eight minutes to go, and they trail 35 to 7. You know how you would ask a young NFL player if he remembered the tradition or, say, somebody that went way before him? It's unlikely that he might know the history of, of, of what has gone on before him, but that's not the case with these Army and Navy football players. When you walk through these academies, the history that is bestowed upon them, as we see a touchdown pass by Zach Dom, a nice throw. Flag down, Aaron Alexander, the recipient, and Dom upset 
as it looks like this one is coming back. Or is it? Dahman's first reaction was it was against Army. Looks like it was against Navy. Personal foul. Midshipman, touchdown, will stand. And as I was saying, the, the history that is bestowed upon them, that they all realize, that they all recognize, that they understand, and that they, they certainly take to heart. 35 to 13. Army off Dead to ball, take on the extra foul, point. Number 91 of the defense. That penalty will be administered 15 yards on the kickoff. And so many class acts that have come through the two academies. Heisman Trophy winners. Glenn Davis. One of the great names in Army history. Watching this game today. And we know he's been under the weather. We wish him all the best. Blocked. On an extra point. The little things. Hunter Reddick. Sophomore from San Diego, California. Able to get his hands on this attempt. Army gets the touchdown. They just don't get the seven. This is titanium. Strong. Long-lasting. Durable. And only Remington brings it to you in the all-new titanium shaving system. Designed for closeness, comfort, and to clean itself automatically. Any way you slice it, it's extraordinary. Shave after shave. Remington Titanium. It could just make all other shavers obsolete. And for her, the Remington Smooth and Silky. America's number one women's brand. Honey, wake up! Time for presents! This holiday, show her how excited you are about her. A gift from Kay means every diamond is hand-selected to match beautifully, and she'll absolutely love it. Wow! Wow! Every kiss begins with Kay. In three days... Get born! The Born Supremacy explodes onto DVD. Why are they still after me? Packed with pulse-pounding extras that will blow your mind. Get it! The Born Supremacy on DVD in three days. With faster acceleration than a BMW 325XI and an Audi TT, the all-new Hemi-powered Jeep Grand Cherokee conquers the road like a sports car. And with our exclusive Quadra-Drive 2 four-wheel drive system, it conquers everything else like a trail-rated Jeep 4x4. You began an affair with her in 2001, is that correct? He's not going to answer that. Everyone leaves in your life, don't they, Jeff? No! Yeah. No! Yeah. New Without a Trace, Thursday. From Strike Fighter Squadron 201, go Navy, beat Army. Uh, you got to know that the Navy fight song ends with the words Beat Army, printed on all the weights, Beat Army. It's, it's a major priority for the Naval Academy <laughs> as we take a look at the play of the you game presented so. by Wrangler five-star premium dental. It's an understatement. Here it is, Wrangler five-star play of the game and turning point of the game as well. I don't know, Ian. Fourth and 12th quarterback, you got to do something. You got to try to make a play. It just so happens that Josh Smith, one of these super seniors for Navy, comes up with yet another big play as he takes the ball out of the air as Zach Donovan was just trying to make a play. 66 yards on the interception return for a touchdown. The Navy's got another game left. They're playing in the bowl game out on the West Coast. The Emerald Bowl in San Francisco, SBC Park, 7:30 against New Mexico. I think you're probably going. You should see an onside kick here. The ball being placed at the 50-yard line after that penalty that was on Navy. Austin Miller will roll one to the 10, and Jason Tomlinson will that was it. take a knee. <laughs> I've never seen. It's at the 50, and he just bounced it to the 10-yard line instead of attempting the onside kick. Let's check out the CBS Sports line stat of the game. Fourth down conversions. Army electing to go for it 
on four different tries today and coming up empty. Complete game stats at CBSSportsLine.com. Well, two in the first half that were simply because I think Bobby Ross felt like he didn't want to put his defense back out on the field. And two in the second half simply because they are so far behind. First and ten for the Mids from the 13. This is Echol powering his way out across the 15. Let's check in with Dwayne Ballin. Dwayne. Thank you, Ryan. I'm with Secretary England of the Navy. Secretary, things going well on this evening for you boys in blue and gold. Things are going very well today. Thank you. Anytime it's uh, 35 to 13 with seven minutes to go, it's a great day for Navy. I know you just returned from Iraq. What does this mean to the troops there and around the globe? Well, first of all, I know they're watching. I was in Iraq. They were all playing to watch all of our Marines and SEALs and Special Forces. So first, I want to say hello to them because I know they're watching. But it's important. I mean, it's a game, and they know it's a game. I mean, they're in a much, much more important activity. But nonetheless, they like to see Navy win every year against Army, so it's exciting. Uh, but like I said last year, it is just a game. But it's a competitive game, and it does, it does teach, uh, you know, how to be competitive later on in life when it really gets serious, like we're doing in Iraq. Secretary England, thank you for your time, sir. Thanks. My pleasure. Good being here. Thank you. Ian. All right, Dwayne, Secretary, thank you. Third and three now for Navy as we approach six minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Midshipman 35, Black Knights 13. Ooh. On the game. No, Polanco, a five-yard gain by himself. And what a nice play by Polanco who shows a little bit of toughness right there as he bounces off a would-be tackler and then goes for the first down. And you know, it's interesting when you hear the Secretary of the Navy and the Army speak, obviously, the, the significance of this football game. But whether you're wearing the blue and gold of Navy or the black, gold, and gray of Army, at the end of the game, you will see sportsmanship as they both come together as one, and they represent the red, white, and blue. And that's the ultimate team that they are brothers in arms for the rest of their lives. It's Polanco again. Will spin his way on first down. And Aaron Polanco picks up six. Coming up tomorrow, NFL on CBS, regional action. Early on, New England at Cleveland, Houston at the Jets. Watch that team right there. Oh, I'm you like you. Buffalo. Denver at San Diego, late game, Kansas City at Oakland. All begins the NFL today. You got Greg, you got Dan, you got Shannon, and you got hey. the other guy. <laughs> there he is. Handsome man on the oh, right yeah, side yeah, of your thanks. screen. Boomer size. I'll tell you what, you watch Buffalo. They are five and six. They have five very winnable games on their schedule, and they are playing very well. Hand off to Echol, sticking his helmet down and carrying to the 35 yard line. It's a four yard game. We head back to New York. Tim Brando. Ivan Boomer, a moment ago we showed you a 96 yard punt return. This is the way USC answers. Give it to Reggie Bush. You will not find anyone catching this guy from behind. He has an 81-yarder to go ahead with his 65-yarder earlier. 153 yards on six rushes. UCLA added a field goal. It's now 17-10. He's got a burst. Kind of like Kyle Echol. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit like Kyle. Kyle actually could be in the same backfield with him. One the day. Next level. You never know. On the kick. As we speak on cue. Kyle Echol busting to the outside, and Echol spilled out at the 30-yard line. Caleb Campbell, the freshman, came out of the prep school and starting at the whip position. Echol has put up huge numbers, 180 yards on the ground. Well, we've been talking all day about Echol and his speed. And he's, he told us that he was a 4.55 40-yard dash guy. That's pretty good speed. And right there, you can see that he has that little burst that you've been talking about. One of the things that's most impressive watching him alive is how people just bounce off of him. He reminds me, his running style reminds me a lot of John Riggins. Mm -hmm. He will lower that shoulder, shoulder and you will bounce off of him if you are a would-be tackler, if you are not locked and loaded. Marvin Dingle now in there. And Dingle gets the call straight up the middle. Time now for our Scholar Athlete presented by Red Lobster, Kurt Daniels engineering psychology team captain district academic all america red lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today donating a thousand dollars 
to Army's General Scholarship Fund. Now, wouldn't it be fair to say that any one of these guys could have won that? Yeah. I mean, look at some of the majors. It's quantitative physics or quantitative economics. Lamar Owens now in the game for Navy to back up to Polanco, a junior who may have the inside track for the starting job next year. Now that guy looks familiar. That's actually Polanco's twin brother that you may have just seen along the sideline. You know, and, and what's interesting about Aaron Polanco and his twin brother James at birth, you talk about miracle kids. Aaron Polanco was two pounds and his brother James was one pound. And they have grown up to be Navy football players, Navy student athletes. It's a great story. James transferred from Texas Tech to get closer to his brother Aaron. Final 2, 27 here. Owens taking it himself. And Lamar Owens angles out of bounds. Bobby, Bobby Ross probably wondering if this is going to be you know, signs of things to come here for Navy, watching Owens run around the corner like that. Another athletic quarterback, it looks like, in the mold for Coach Johnson at the, uh, the Naval Academy. And a first and ten. 218 to go on the fourth. Navy. 35 to 13 over Army from the 15-yard line. And up the middle. Matt Hall getting the carry, the sophomore from Cape Corral, Florida. And I and you and I were talking all week long with these players, especially the seniors, about the finality of this particular game. The fact that this is their last Army Navy game, and I would imagine the emotion is a little bit more negative on the Army sideline as it starts to set in, realizing that they will not don that uniform anymore. On second and nine, Owens trying to make the cut. And Greg Washington there to help bring him down. Now to a minute 35 left for Navy. It's going to be three in a row over Army. And it's not over for the midshipmen. Still have some plans on the West Coast for Bobby Ross and company. This is it for the season. The 1992 National Championship, eight-point underdogs, win by 21 points against the number one ranked Miami Hurricanes. 1997, Florida, Florida State, 85,000 screaming fans at the Swamp. Back and forth at the end, Florida pulls it out 32 to 29. You're waiting for the players to come out of the tunnel, and when they come out of the tunnel, the whole stadium explodes. I love college football. Roll Tide. College basketball is back on CBS. Doubleheader next Saturday, Indiana takes on Kentucky. Stanford versus Michigan State. That's next Saturday. Doubleheader action, NCAA basketball starting at 1.30 Eastern here on CBS. And don't forget, SEC championship is coming up next. Auburn against Tennessee from Atlanta. Right here on CBS. Maybe a time to celebrate for Army. Time for reflection. Many of the seniors wrapping up their collegiate playing career and facing a much different reality on graduation. And if there's a good thing, Army will be leaving Conference USA starting next year, although they add Boston College, teams like Iowa State, Baylor on the Baylor. schedule next year, UConn. Yeah, those are easy. On third and 12. Make on the handoff. Owens will do it himself. Touchdown. Midshipman. Beautiful play action. Savannah, Georgia's own Lamar Owens. He's had injury trouble his first two years and maybe a sign of things to come at the quarterback position for Navy. Coming into the game, I had only 20 carries for 89 yards, and Navy is going to take a timeout right here, but 
He's going to have a memory of a lifetime scoring a touchdown versus Army in this game. 125 to go, fourth quarter. Timeout taken with Navy in front, 41 to 13. You may have seen the, the beginning of our broadcast today, the open, which was so well produced. Chad Jenkins, part of that, served in Fallujah, the Army quarterback, as a senior in 2001. Graduated the academy in 02. He's returned safely from the tour in Iraq. He's getting married next week to a soon-to-be bride, Emily. And Clint Bruce. Naval Academy helped us out immensely preparing for this broadcast. He just wanted to say hello to SEAL Team 5 Alpha Platoon, Beef in the boards. So you gotta know a guy named Beef in the military. He thinks about them every day, and our thanks to Clint Bruce and his interest in helping us along the way to make this a better telecast today. Without question, I am these academies and still a pride within these players. And uh, their students that is really something to, to marvel at and it's uh, been an honor and a pleasure to be able to cover this game and to visit these the academies over the week and spend time with these players and coaches and realize just how much it, you know they really mean to our country well so many negatives swirling around the sports world these days these are players that deserve the spotlight on them and you're right it's been our honor and pleasure to be a part of the 105th meeting between Army and Navy. Ethan Goons out of the field. And the extra point is good. Twin brothers, Aaron and James Polanco. Navy, close to another win. Mmm, something smells good. Delivery? It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. DiGiorno? Get out. You fix the oven. You fix the oven? You are handy. I'm calling mother. <laughs> pizza? Introducing DiGiorno Microwave Pizza. Rises up golden brown in minutes. For oven baked taste in a hurry, it's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Microwave. Microwave, huh? At least I fixed something. What happened? I just give my mom the present that I got her gay. This holiday, how will you give her as much joy as she has given you? <laughs> Mom likes it. <laughs> Diamond solitaire earrings from K Jewelers would be a great start. Wow, she really likes it. And you can be assured of two things. Every diamond is hand-selected to match beautifully, and she'll absolutely love them. I think they're gonna kiss now. I think you're right. <gasps> Every kiss begins with K. Lane Jackson, number 44, playing with a heavy heart. His cousin, Megan Dean, passed away last week. He gave a football signed by all the seniors to his Aunt Jan and told her those are his brothers. That's his family along with his real family as well. And you can see the exuberance from Jackson who has been an emotional leader and overachiever for this Navy defense. And if there were ever a player on this field that exemplifies the best in every human being, it's this guy right here. Many of the defensive players on Navy told us he was their inspiration, inspirational leader. This means the world to him. That academy is his life, and those are his brothers to each of his side, and he will tell you that he will fight to the death for them. It's interesting. You asked him, why do you come to Navy? He said, not why you come, it's why you stay. Right. He was ready to leave after his freshman year, but could not leave his brothers. Those are his words. Scott Wesley on the return. Able to cross the 20-yard line and extend his body. Keenan Little making the tackle on special teams, and we've got a minute 19 left in our nation's rivalry. The brother always. J.P. Blexmith. I don't know. They got it. Scott Seller. Zellum fallen heroes for the Naval Academy, and their thoughts are in the minds of these players right now. Their lives taken away. But they were serving our nation. Matt Silva throwing on first down. And it's incomplete to Ulikowski. 
Navy 42, Army 13. With 114 left to go in this fourth quarter. Well, for Army, they were hoping for an improvement over last year. It didn't go that way for the Black Knights today. Navy continues its dominance in the series. As Silver throws to the outside, Scott Wesley. And the final minute and change. The Navy midshipmen, second back-to-back -back commander in chief trophy in school history. They did it back in 78 and 79. And they will do it again here today. 48 seconds left. Silver, the senior from Stockton, California, is dumped by Ty Adams, the sophomore. Loss of 11. Zach Dahlman will be back for his senior season next year. A lot of playing experience. And he told us, though, you never feel secure as the starting quarterback. He's felt pressure throughout the season to maintain that number one spot. I'm sure he'll feel it again in spring practice. Well, I'll, I'll tell you that, you know, when you are the starter at the end of last season and then when the next season comes by and, and you are a backup and you don't start until the fourth game of the season, you can understand why he's uh, so insecure about his status. But really, I mean, he has grown immensely in the last year, not only physically but mentally. And I thought that every through the interception that Josh Smith took back for a touchdown, he came back and willed the touchdown for Army before the end of the first half. So, you know, I mean, if there's one thing that Bobby's got going for him, he's got his quarterback coming back next year, and that's got to be a source of comfort for Bobby Ross as a coach. And he adapted well to Bobby Ross's system. Bobby told us that he makes all the right calls at the line of scrimmage. And if they send in the wrong personnel that doesn't match up with the play, he'll get it straight. You know, that's, that's half the paddle for quarterbacks these days, knowing the plays and personnel and how they match up together. Silva throwing on a fourth and 14. Jarring hit. Corey Anderson with A.J. Walker making the stick. It's incomplete. This is tough for offenses now, this part of the game, with the score completely out of hand, and the opposing team knowing that you're going to have to throw the football. Quarterbacks and receivers are the ones that bear the brunt of the defensive shots, and that's exactly what happened right there. Good, clean hit. Unfortunately, at the end of these games, this is how it goes down, and... I've been to many of them where I've been on the, the end of those hits, and they're not fun. How about a memory for the senior from Houston, Texas, A.J. Walker. He was on the Navy basketball team as well, and he got one last shot at a wide receiver before his college career comes to an end in the regular season. The bowl game coming up as well. Well, Navy now goes to nine wins. The last time they did that was in 1963 when the great Roger Staubach Storback was their quarterback. And Paul Johnson has brought this program all the way back to the top. Congratulations to the midshipmen and Paul Johnson on a job well done. Navy's dominance over Army continues. Third straight victory for the midshipmen over the Black Knights. And they do it once again in impressive fashion. Navy 42, Army 13 as we head down to the field and Dwayne Bell. Coach Johnson, a dominant performance. Your seniors led the way. Well, I'm so proud of this football team. The seniors have led all year. And, uh, you know, we set some goals at the beginning of the year. The number one was to win the Commander-in-Chief Trophy. And, uh, you know, they've done it. So all the credit goes to the players. I tell you, I couldn't be happier for them. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Ian? All right, Dwayne, thanks very much. Standing by for the alma maters where the losing team faces its fellow cadets in the stands. Players from both teams stand at attention. The alma mater from the losing team has played. Then they face the winning team and play the alma mater for Navy. In the tradition, part of the history of this Army-Navy Classic. And this is the sportsmanship we were talking about. You don't ever see this anywhere else in college football. This is a special moment even though it's tough for these Army football players to face the, the brigade of midshipmen. However, this is, uh, this is what sportsmanship and brotherhood is all about.
that's it from Philadelphia. For Boomer Esaias and Dwayne Ballin, our entire CBS crew, this is Ian Eagle. The final score, Navy 42, Army 13. SEC Championship game presented by Dr. Pepper. Coming up, Auburn flashes with Tennessee. Navy, another big victory over Army. The Commander-in-Chief's trophy is there. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports.